Hi guys, it's Christine Bertram and I am coming to you live from the hive on let's get the date right tonight, guys. <laughs> it's Wednesday, May 25th. <laughs> it is definitely not May 10th, like I said yesterday. I had to tell Tyler all about my blumber or blooper <laughs> saying it was May 10th during Tip Tuesday yesterday and then it took me all the way till the very end to figure out that I said that. And uh, thinking back, I had remembered it. So yay, we're live. It came up right away. Hi, Karen Carse. Hi, Becky Gandolfo. There are four others watching too. I don't see your names popping up, but hello to everybody so far. All right, let's get situated. There's Linda. Woohoo! Hi, Lizzie. Let's see if our lights can get better. I always have an issue with the lights, you guys. Up and my camera up here, it looks great. But then when I see it down in my phone, it looks dark. <laughs> Hi, Cindy. Hi, Linda. Hi, Betty. Woohoo! We're live and we're going to be doing the hand penned memories and more card class tonight. Hi, Penny Powell. Hi, Deb. Happy stamping. Hi, Sherry and Barb and Lynn and Laura. Woohoo! You guys are all rolling in. It's not my normal Wednesday stamping night. Usually my Wednesday nights are in person. Uh, so tonight would have normally been an in-person card class. Um, how this ended up being live on a Wednesday is this is an ad hoc card class, you guys. <laughs> it wasn't ever intended to happen. <laughs> um, lighting looks great to Deb. Good. Thanks for confirming that, Deb. Um, this wasn't on my books from the beginning of the year. Um, usually I set my schedule for by the catalogs and I wasn't anticipating doing this one, but after we did the Heart and Home class last month, thanks for sharing, Deb. I really appreciate it. Thanks, everybody who shares. That's awesome. Hi, Joan Gordon. Um, so this card class came about because of the hand pen memories and more. Hi, Patsy from Maine. The sun is up with you. By us, it's dark and dreary, and it has been raining all day. <laughs> so it'll be good to get some sunshine this weekend. Um, the Heart and Home. Hi, Denise. The Heart and Home class was um, a uh, memories and more card making class. Hi Donna. Hi Amy. And you guys loved it. And so the talk on the town was, hi Millie, that if I got enough interest in doing the hand penned memories and more card glass, then we'd go ahead and do it and we'd throw it on the books. So <laughs> yeah, technically I was going to have a free week of classes this week. Usually the, le the weeks around Memorial Day, 4th of July and Labor Day, I generally don't have classes in line or on person because people are doing holiday stuff. Hi Mitzi, um, Christmas time too. So um, so I was supposed to have free nights every night this week <laughs> and I scheduled the in-person version for this class on Monday and then the online became tonight and then tomorrow I still have my regular ink paper scissors with the crane symbols of fortune. So hi Jamie Collins, hi Beverly Smith. Woohoo, sunny Arizona. You are always having sun down there, it seems, girl. <laughs> so, so this is how this class came to be. I've learned that there is usually enough interest in doing um, uh, memories and more card making class. And so I am actually adding one onto the books for the summer. Um, I haven't quite figured out the day and time. Uh, the weeknights are generally full with um, three nights a week I do class between Monday, Wednesday in person, and then Thursday online. And then I usually do one weekend a month with classes. And so I'm trying to look at the schedule to figure out where I can sneak in an in-person class. Hi, Ann Adams, and an online class. So the Texture Chic is the annual catalog, Memories and More card pack and envelopes. So I already have, I think, four people on the list. Even though it's not even published, you guys, I I started a waiting list. So I already have about four people, I think, on that list. Um, Four, Becky Rohr, Mary Lemke, Doris Monson, and Sarah Merchant. Hi, Judy Krueger. All of you four are already on the Texture Chic waiting list to find out the details for that. I will run it the same way. Hi, Gloria Shermer, Shermo. I will run it the same way where you get the whole pack of um, note cards and envelopes, the uh, memories and more card pack, uh, ribbon, um, and an embellishment. And hi, Rose from Canada. So... Watch for more details on that. I already worked with Carissa. She came up over, add back again, Buffalo. I can do that. Um, I worked with Carissa over the weekend. She came up to drop off some swap cards and um, we played. Oh my gosh, you guys, we really took the bull by the horns. <laughs> and um, we, um, you two, Rose, take care. We worked on um, the Texture Chic 
um, sweet class that I have in July, and we worked on the Texture Chic Memories and More, and we worked on, oh my goodness, um, Hues of Happiness Ink Paper Scissors. We were just like pumping out stuff left and right. So um, it was a great design afternoon. So Becky and Becky, it's so funny. Um, when I had you guys for the this class tonight, you guys ended up right next to each other uh, on the list as well. So perfect. I have you on my list. Hi, Mary Jean. Hi, Feline. Okay. So, uh, so just know, you guys, as soon as I have the date for the next Memories and More class, I will keep you guys posted. Um, oh, Mitzi said she loves the cards for the Crane of Fortune. Yes, that is going to be a fun class for a night. Speaking of that, you guys, I am down to seven sets left for that class, seven card kits left. Hi, Cheryl Stewart. Uh, so working my way down there. I know by the end of class, I'll have a few more gone. But if anybody was on the fence about the Symbols of Fortune class, just reach out to me. I can always get them out to you. I think I might even be down to six because Andrea asked for a set. So I think I only have six left now. Okay, coming in late, what is the new memories and more card class? It is the Texture Chic. I don't have them designed. I have them all laid out. So uh, it'll operate the same way. Hi, Bonnie Kelly. Um, thanks for sharing, Feline. I appreciate it. So I also sat and figured out what the rest of the year is going to look like, you guys. Oh, my goodness. I got my hands on the new holiday catalog early because I was an incentive trip achiever. Um, Mitzi Stanley, the new Memories and More card class will be $60 mailed, uh, so I can also add you to it. Um, I got my hands on the catalog early, and I was able to map out the rest of my year. Woo, you guys, is that not crazy? Um, Feline, I saw your note about the texture chic. So you're on my list. You guys don't have to worry about paying. I just want to get a list started uh, so that I can always reach out to you um, when the time comes. Uh, so I mapped out the sweet classes for September, October, November, December. Diane and I mapped out the let's just stamp for those four months. We mapped out all the monthly cards, like what we want to use for sets and the ink, paper, scissors, you guys. So um, hi, bon Bonnie Jonas. Uh, so exciting. Just know that the it doesn't it seem crazy. Uh, oh, Mitzi, you want the crane of fortune? Um, okay, maybe you don't want the texture chic uh, memories and more. Um, but definitely, I can uh, get you a crane. Send me a note too outside of this. But definitely, I'll save a crane for you. And just confirm. Hi, Melody Miller. Just confirm if you wanted the texture chic. If not, I can take your name off. Um, so Cheryl Stewart, I can put you on the list. Uh, so. I will be working on updating the new schedule, right? So it'll be solid for the rest of the year, okay? So I don't know when I'll get to it, but I need to fit it in somewhere. So you guys, you know, be patient with me on that, but I will get it out there and then you guys can have the copy for the rest of the year. Hi, Joanna. Um, thanks for sharing, Denise. Um, yeah, so the holiday catalog goes live July 1st. It's so crazy that they... It's so back to back. I feel like I'm still coming up from water from the launch of the annual catalog with all the product shares, the in color clubs, the DSP sampler, you guys. And and then now it's like, whoo, turn around and do it again with another catalog. And then we'll have a lull for a while, though, because there won't be another new catalog until January. So um, it'll be good. Hi, Doris Munson. Um, so um, yeah, so that's exciting. So we leave for Utah on Wednesday and it's only for six days. So any, hi Karen Cotton, any class signups that you guys want to do? I know it's Memorial Day weekend coming up, but if you have a chance to look at the calendar and see what you want to take for June, as soon as I get back from my trip, I will be starting to prep for my June classes. And it's always great to have a good ballpark of how many people are planning to, um, take the classes and then I always budget more or forecast more um, so that, oh, you're well, no problem, Karen, that you're late. Um, so if there's anything you want to get signed up for June, just I, all I need is your name to get on the list and we can always figure out later if you want to place an order to get it free or if you need to pay for it. So um, that will help me um, if you can get anything in before I leave on my trip because I know when I get on my trip, I'll try to not answer emails <laughs> while I'm gone. <laughs> I'll try to respect my time with Tyler and um, the Stamping Up gals that I'm hanging out with. So woohoo! Okay, so that's the schedule. Um, what else? Um, I do have the cards from the catalog launch party that I will announce who won them later tonight. I I will confess, uh, if you've won a card from me in the last probably three to four weeks, I have a little pile of them between the launch of the new catalog and now rolling right into making about 160 swap cards this week. 
I've put the sending out the cards on the back burner, but my goal is to have them out before next week. So don't stress or don't fret if you haven't gotten a card that you have won from me. Um, it hasn't come in the mail yet. Just know it's still here safe and sound and those will be going out. I promise by before I leave on Wednesday, they will be in the mail. So that's my plan. Um, so I also announced um, we'll do the door prize winner for class tonight. So um, let's do the class roster for um, attendee list here so I can call out. And if you guys are watching and present, you can shout out and say hi if you haven't already. All right. So from having nobody signed up and not having this class on the books, I ended up with 32 people. So that is quite awesome. Um, Chris Niebaum got my last uh, set because somebody had to cancel um, in person. So she already got that. And that's, so I have none left, you guys. So don't ask me. <laughs> I will have a PDF tutorial for this class available, which we'll look at throughout class tonight. So Leslie McMinn, Karen Cotton, you're here, woohoo, Beverly Smith, Cindy Runtree, uh, Barb Johnson, Feline Mays, Sandy Wicklander, Mary Ostrich, Brenda Loveless, Barbara Moynan, D. Serena, Sue Somerville, Mo Stites, Carla Lake, Jeannie Parker, Doris Munson, Faye Godby, Patsy Roberts, Becky Rohrer, Becky Gandolfo, Shirley Mulkey, Jamie Collins, Cheryl Thomas, Carla Cordes, Gwen Petroshek, and Chris Niebaum. And then in person on Monday, we had Anna, Tracy, Joyce, Judy, and Diane. So when I do the door prize drawing later, I will include all 32 people. So yay. Okay. All right. So let's get started. A uh, bunch of you are here. Awesome. So this is a different kind of a class, you guys. This is called a Memories and More and it's a product-based class. And the name of it always includes the product that I'm using. So this is the hand-penned Memories and More product-based class. In the past, there's been Heart and Home. I did the gingerbread. I've even done some with pineapples like a year or so ago. But um, you guys, there's a group of you that really like these. Hi, Julie Bierschbach. Um, the one thing, and I did a tip Tuesday on this last week, um, was to don't dismiss the Memories and More cards and envelopes as well as the card packs. Hi, Lisa Spacek. Um, so I carry Peterson. Uh, just don't dismiss them because you're a card maker only and you think they're for scrapbooking or memory keeping. Uh, we can completely convert these cards, mats and bases and envelopes, all of that into beautiful cards. Um, yes, Cheryl Stewart. The tutorial will be available in my online store at some point tomorrow. I never publish it if I intend to publish it, I never publish it until the live video is done because then I include a link for Facebook and YouTube in the PDF tutorial. Uh, so I will be putting this one in my online store probably at some point tomorrow. Mom is coming back around 9.30 and we have about, let's see, 22, we have about 40 cards yet to make tomorrow. We have probably 100 done in the last two days, but we have four, about 40 left. So at some point I'll sneak in. Um, you guys, just as a reminder too, the PDF tutorial for this. Everybody who paid for this class, you got the PDF tutorial. It was emailed on Monday. Um, I know that was a couple days. I try to give you a few more days, but it, with I'll, I'm going to get back on track with a few more, <laughs> more than a two days notice. <laughs> um, this morning, you guys, for Ink, Paper, Scissors, I emailed the PDF this morning for class tomorrow night. So that one was a little bit sketchy, but Whew, we got it. I needed to get the watermark cards from my cousin Kelly to put into the PDF tutorial and she hadn't done them. And so I was waiting on her then to get them. But anyways, we got all the PDFs sent out for the week. Woohoo. But yes, Cheryl, this will be in the store tomorrow. So let's talk about what this is. Um, I always get a Memories More kit. Yes, Linda always gets the Memories More kits. They're fun. Um, I used to, thanks Cindy, I appreciate it. You guys are so patient with me. I really appreciate that. <laughs> I always make sure I get it out. Oh, that one was the day of, that was not good. But <laughs> usually I try to be at least two to three, four days before. Um, the memories and more, I used to buy these and um, I'm a busy lady. You're right, Mitzi. <laughs> but never too busy for you guys. Um, I always have a just in time kind of a task list. <laughs> um, you lost my volume. Let's just see here. I'm gonna see if I can hear it. The memories I can hear it. So, Julie, it might be something on your phone that you lost the volume. Um, I definitely have my volume. Um, so, memories and more. I used to buy them as well and never do anything with them until I saw a different demonstrator put together a class when I went to one of her retreats. And I thought, oh, well, this is kind of cool. I'm like, let's make this happen. And so, um, 
it's kind of progressing that every time they have one, I've been doing a class on it. So the next one is Texture Chic, which will happen sometime later in the summer, I think. And then the one after that is going to be out of the holiday catalog. There is a set of Memories and More cards and envelopes in the pack, uh, which is Christmas themed. And so I'll be doing that later in, I think it's November. So yes, hi, Tabitha Lawson. Um, yep, it's good on Denise's end too. It's back, Julie. Perfect. So it might have been something with your phone. So um, I'm going to flip the camera down and I got a lot of stuff going on. Um, I'm going to show you a little bit what we got going on. Um, awesomeness in motion is what she is. Yay. I love that. I need to write that down. <laughs> oh, Penny, if you think of it, send me that in a message. <laughs> Hi, Hilda <Nell. laughs> All right. So you guys, um, so happy mail first though. I wanted to share this with you so I can move it off to the side. I got this beautiful card from Mo Stites. Um, look at what she did here. I love it. You guys, I'm going to have Kelly do a technique Thursday on this technique next week. And she said it's called a twisted ribbon technique from a Dawn Height on YouTube. All stamping up current products except for the retired flower punch. Pool party, blackberry bliss. The ribbon panel is extra thick because I messed up on the stamping and cut it off you know, the other card instead of making another one. I love it, Mo. That was awesome. Way to be honest with me. <laughs> so very, very pretty card, you guys. That's um, called, if you guys need it, the twisted ribbon technique from Dawn uh, hate, I think, H-A-I-G-H-T. So I'm going to have Kelly do a technique Thursday on this. Um, she's got a couple in the books already, but when she has a free time moment, she'll do that one. This card came from Mary Ellen Ryan. So I always should have put a post-it note on there just saying hello. Um, some new product here. Some of the new in colors she featured. Very pretty Mary Ellen. I love it. I love that stitched background here. And then this You're As Sweet As a Peach comes from... Sue Thomas, and she decorated it really nice in the inside as well, and she used some of the Sweet as a Peach. Oh, look at you guys. She used that greenery background as well. Very cool. So, um, hi, Linda Kester. Very pretty cards, my girls. Okay, so that's my happy mail I want to share with you. So, this is actually uh, Chris Kneebaum's um, kit, just to show you guys what everybody got who took this class with me. Um, it came with a ribbon combo pack, which actually has... Uh, three rolls of ribbon. All three of these rolls really coordinated nicely with the cards. And this is what the card pack looks like unopened. So everybody got this. You got a package, a full package of the opal rounds, and then you got a full package of, these are the note cards and envelopes. They are bigger. They are not A2 size. Uh, where the hand pen had small ones and large ones, this one had all large ones. So there's 20 envelopes, 20 bases, and when you get into here, this has got like 50 mats and some stickers. So you guys can see I updated my host code and my blue marker wasn't working so hot. So I transitioned to orange. So it looks scrappy. <laughs> so, But you guys got this. All right. So this is going to be Chris's being mailed out to her soon. Um, and then we have um the pdf tutorial this is also part of your class registration that you got um i emailed this on monday it did not include the video links here so just so you know i always do a little pdf for this and i am going to you guys this is going to maybe surprise or shock you a little bit but i'm going to work in order of the pdf tutorial <laughs> this has never really officially happened before that i can recall where i actually went in the exact order as the cards so we're going to do that tonight we hygiene maxwell we did this on monday night in person and they liked it having it in order there's something about going in order through a document so so we're actually going to do that um so this pdf was emailed out to everybody on monday so if you didn't get it just check your inboxes or your spam folders to make sure you got it. And this is the PDF that I'm going to put in my online store. Uh, hopefully tomorrow is the plan. Um, and you can get it there or you can also pay me electronically for it if you prefer that. So I have pictures of each of the cards and then instructions. And I know um, for the in-person class, we found one thing where I didn't say something correctly. And we'll talk about it. It's this card right here, actually the first one. So we'll talk about it right away. So we're going to go through the, the PDF tutorial and get everything prepped. We're going to make this super easy for you guys so that you can create along with me very easily. I do want to call out primarily, oh, my stamps are all sitting on the counter over there. I need to go get them. Um, I primarily used a Memento Black Ink Misty Moonlight and then um, blends for coloring is what we're going to need. And I'll be bringing out my blends momentarily so that you guys can see them. Um, but I did want to call out 
and this stuff is called out in the PDF itself. Like here, um, there's some, an embossed image on the background and it's pretty flowers. So this stuff is called out specifically, but I wanted just to say um, primarily what I used, um, the hand penned bundle, uh, which includes the stamp set and then the dies. So this die got used. Um, this is that pretty flowers. I brought that in for one of the cards. I did bring in the stitched rectangles. This guy right here was brought in for one of the cards. I brought in the new, they're called deckled, I was gonna show you the name, but you probably can't even see it, deckled rectangles. I pulled in two of them with a black and a white. Thanks for sharing, Bonnie, I appreciate it. Hi, Randy Schultz. Um, these are new, they're super cool. They are kind of similar to the rectangles, one stitched, ones they're called deckled. So that got brought in. You guys know my favorite embossing folder, painted textures needed to get pulled in as well, so that's, along for the ride. And then I brought in the waves die right here. This guy got used on one of your cards. So, so that's the extra stuff um, that got brought in. I'm going to show you, what am I going to show you? Okay. You also in your packet of stuff, you guys got, you got this piece right here. This is a packet. It's a cellophane envelope filled with extra bits and parts. So you will need your card bases and envelopes, and we're gonna go through this together as a group, okay? So don't fret, and we're just gonna go slowly through this, and we're gonna get everything lined up in order from backwards to forward, and you guys are gonna have a fun crafting experience, I believe. But just know that the, the class makes 15 cards. It makes all 15 of these cards, and that only uses half of your note cards and envelopes and half of the pack. You have another half that you can go ahead and use to make more cards or set them aside and never do anything with. I don't know, whatever you want. <laughs> um, um, hi, Christina. Hi, Kathy Jackson. Just know that if you want to double this class at home, you would need to like basically duplicate this. So you would need some extra mats, some extra card bases, maybe a little label, um, some extra, I had included five envelopes in this. So just know that if you wanna double this class at home, you would need to add this packet on your own. Otherwise you have everything else to work with um, included in the packet. So, so what I wanna do first with you guys is, you know, you need this and you need these, but you don't need these envelopes right now, okay? So what you need to do is open up your packages, right? So you have these two things right now. What those that want to, are doing this along with me, um, perfect. Mary has her own. Mary Jean has her own. Yep. So whoever's, nope, Judy Kruger, I don't have any of these left. They are all gone. Um, Chris was um, watching Tip Tuesday yesterday and she got my last one. Uh, so what you guys need to do is slice this open, slice this open, get the plastic off. Don't start um, going crazy and like mix, mat, mixing, mixing and matching stuff. Just open them up, take the plastic off, get rid of the cardboard, all right? And um, the envelopes are already decorated, you guys, so you don't need to do anything to them. Isn't that super cool? So you should have 20 envelopes. Honestly, just set them off to the side. You don't need them at the moment. They're going to just be in your way. So I would definitely take these and set them off to the side and don't worry about it. And then what you need to do is um, you need to grab your card bases. Now, remember I said we're making half. So what you need to do is take 10 of these and keep them by you. Um, hi, Stacy Burns, and take 10 of them and put them away. Put them with the envelopes. Now, I unfortunately don't have, I have enough for a class tonight, um, but I didn't buy an extra pack for myself. And thank goodness Diane Bogenhagen gave me some of hers because I can't buy more of this, you guys. It's retired product now. So you need to count out 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Hi, Becky Christensen. So you need 10 of these. The other 10, I promise you have 20. Take and put the other 10 away and keep the other 10 handy. Like keep it right by your side here, okay? All right, then, um, hi Shirley. Then you guys have your memories and more. This is called your card pack. Hi Debbie from Central Illinois. This is your card pack, you guys. There are little babies. I call these small card mats. I call these the large card mats. This is three by four. This is four by six. And then included in that are some sticker sheets, okay? 
So you have four sticker sheets. These two are the same. These two are the same. So you only need half, right? We said we're going to divide this in half. So put one on your pile here to keep. Hi, Cheryl Thomas from Ohio. Hi, Naughty Nancy. Are you back in town, girl? <laughs> so this one's set to the side. You need one of these. Put it on your pile to work with. Thanks for sharing, Kathy Jackson. Put this one over here. Okay, so you've just divided out your sticker sheets. Now let's use the big ones. These are your large card mats. They're sometimes not in order. Sometimes they put them out of order. But same concept. You are going to make two piles because you only need half. Okay, so... Just don't even look at them, except for to know that you're putting one on this pile and one on this pile. Make sure they match, but other than that, you don't have to pay attention right now to what is on them, okay? So, boom, got it. So, we're putting this pile off to the side. We don't need it. And then here's your small card mats. Okay, same concept, you guys. Um, there should be two of every one of these. Hi, fake Collins, Godby, woo from Virginia. So one, two, okay? So you're just dividing. I'm looking at these to make sure that they are exactly the same, right? Because, you, know, you know, they could be out of order. I promise you on Monday night, everybody's had out of order. They were out of order. I think I put mine back in order because I wanted to make sure I had, because I had an opened pack and I want to make sure I wasn't missing anything. So you're just going to take these and you're dividing them in half. Okay, so I think there's 50 total mats between the big and the small. And, oopsie, hang on. So, one, two, one, two. I'm, for some reason, missing this one, which I should, well, you know what? I wonder if it's in, I, <laughs> you guys should not be missing anything. I'm going to see if my other one's in here just to complete the process of separating. Yeah, that's not it. I... Uh, I had to make sure I had, what's on the back side? Okay, that guy. Okay, so let's go this way. You guys, when you are trying to look easily, it's good to fan stuff, and then you can go like this. Oh, there it is. So this was my spare stuff from a past another kit. So this is extras. All right, so I've completed the process now of separating. So got to keep them separated. All right, that is extra, you guys. Put this with your extra bases and your envelopes, get it out of your way. You don't want to confuse this with this pile, okay? So, out of sight, out of mind. Now what we're gonna do is we have our, we don't have to, well, we're gonna keep the sticker sheets right here. They're right in front of me so I can see them. We have our large mats, we have our small mats, and then we have our card bases, and we have the cellophane packet. So don't start going all over. Kind of try to do what I'm doing, guys. You'll pull this out, set it here. Because what we're going to do is we're going to work backwards right now in this PDF tutorial. And we're going to make a stockpile of our cards. Hi, Zaina. We're going to make a stockpile of our cards. And I think, hi, Arliss. Okay, so this, so what I'm going to do, and I would love for you guys to do with me, who are, who are just to make this less confusing in the long run, work with me to look for your cards and let's get these all in order so that when it comes time to put them together, it's gonna to be super simple. Hi, Carla Lake. So first thing, this, and we're working backwards in the PDF and we're gonna make a pile. So you need a card. This is a base. It's all about the base, no trouble. Card base. And now we need to find this large map. So what you're gonna do is get your base, set it on the side, make, you're starting a pile. And oh, boom, there it is, look at it, right there. This is the card we need to put, or this is a card mat we need to put with this base. There is a bow on here. I am not worried about any ribbons. I am not worried about any embellishments right now. We're only making a pile with paper. Okay, so then we're gonna go backwards and flip this. Okay, and now we need another base. So grab a base, put it here, and now we need to find this large card mat. So this is one of my favorite ones. Oh, there it was. Okay, so I'm gonna set that here, but now there's one thing here that is a sticker. And this would really help, I think, for you guys to cut these stickers as we go. So it says, thinking of you, and it would be very helpful, I think, because sometimes you won't know if it's a sticker or if it's a label that I did, 
But what we did on Monday night in person is people cut out the stickers and they set them on the pile as we were going. So here's the sticker. It needs to go on this pile right here. Okay. And flipping this over, it's another large card base. So one of these. And now we need to find this large mat right here, which will be in the large mat. Oh man, there it is. Okay. So you guys, when we're all done with this process, we're going to have one pile and it's going to go first card to last card. And we're just going to start working through it and we won't have anything left over here. Okay. So now what you need to do though, is I have a pile here of this is the stuff that was extra. I created some mats for you. I created some bases. So this bottom piece here underneath the memories and more card mat is the scalloped piece. I die cut this for you with the hand penned die. It's in the pile that was in the cellophane bag and that needs to go in the pile next. And then we need to find this small card mat, which it's gonna be in the small pile here. And I colored these flowers. So you're gonna look for the purple border with the polka dots, there it is. I, I kind of saw purple, so I'm like, oh, that must be it. So grab this out. And this is the one that we're gonna have to color. Now, if you like the black and white look, you definitely could keep it that way, but I colored mine. So that needs to go here. And then there's a sticker. So on the sticker here, I'm gonna cut out this. It's kind of like pool party-ish. So grab that sticker, cut it off the sheet. Don't peel it off, cut it. Otherwise it's gonna get a hot mess of stickiness on your card pile here. All right, that's it for this one. So we're gonna keep, keep her moving. So another card base, one of the big guys. So all of these until the first 10 are gonna be all these card bases, the big one. All right, now there's a polka dot with the pale papaya, which, oh man, I see it right there, okay? So that's what's, so as you're going through with me guys, if this is a little too fast, just know that like, you might have a whole pile all over the place. And this might be your first time doing this. Just know, just, you're just, cause you might have to look through them, but it's easy guys to honestly, when you have these fanned out like this, you, and you see that this is polka dots and pale papaya, it's like, oh, I can see it right there, right? I know I've been working with this pack a little bit longer than you have, but I'm like, oh, there it is. That's what I need. And then I created for you, hi, Lisa Nealon a pale papaya mat. So from my pile of that was in the cellophane bag, that is the background for this. So put that there. And then the PDF Jamie is $15. Um, if you buy it in my online store though, it's 16 because it charges a convenience fee. So you could always PayPal or Venmo me 15 or pay online with a credit card for 16. Okay. So I'm looking for this black. Um, oh, oh, that might be it. Okay. So Sometimes what I do is I look for what the focal thing is. And I saw that that black um, flower outline was on the outside and there was that labely looking thing on the inside. So on the back of that, it says memories. Memories, nothing but sweet memories. Oh, you're welcome, Jamie. So there's that. Now we have more stickers. So we have here this sticker right here, which says happy birthday. And then we have flowers. So just to keep it straight, there are two flower stickers. There's, so this was right here. Um, yes, Zaina, you can order the PDFs. They're in my online store. Um, not this one at the moment, but if you go to cardsbycrispy.com and you go to my online classes, the PDFs are in there and you can pay for them over the you know, credit card. And then um, they will automatically be emailed to you via my website. Hi, Jean Terwilliger. Um, is the black and white piece correct? No, you're right. You're right. Cindy Runtree, you're amazing. We had this issue in class on um, Monday night and there's two of them that look very similar. And we had a couple people that we, and I did it. Oh, yep. Look at that. Nope. That's not it either. No, it is. This is the right one. This is the right one. And that little foliage knob thing on the bottom gets covered up. Okay, good call, Cindy. A plus for you for tonight. All right, so we're gonna put that one back and put this one over yonder here. And then happy birthday sticker goes back. And then for the flowers, you guys, I cut off this one. So this little guy, you gotta cut him out. And then there's a little 
yellow one here with uh, two leaves and a stem. It's the other sticker sheet, you guys. So you're going to have to pull out that one. All right, so you need these two with this one and then the flower. So there's three stickers on this one. Okay. Then we have, going backwards, oh, Donna Simmer said it looked different. Yep, you guys are on your A game. That's good. <laughs> All right. I don't always do things right, you guys, and I appreciate the extra set of eyes. All right, so another card base, and then we're looking for the yellow white stripies, okay? Oh, man, let's see. Oh, there it is, right there. So yellow kind of pops out to me. So as I was looking at them, I'm like, oh, there it is. <laughs> All right, so there's this is the bottom, and then this is a purple background. So the mat for this is what I cut for you special. It's in the cellophane bag area. So that's the mat. And then we're going to look for this flower, flower power here. So looking for the grid on it. Uh, all right, something like that, but that's not it. And if you don't find it one way, then you look the other way. But I think it's this one right here. Okay, that's the card that goes with this one. And there's also a sticker on this one. It is a white shorter sticker. So it's back on the one where there's pink and peach here. Hi, D Serena. And we're going to put this white sticker on the pile. Okay. Give me some thumbs ups, guys. Are you doing okay? Following along? Not going too fast? I know I've done this a time or two, and maybe you haven't, so I don't want to be rushing anybody, but hopefully you're keeping up okay. Another card base. And now this is one where you're going to pull in my Misty Moonlight, the blue from my pile of extra product here. So there's a Misty Moonlight. Oh, thumbs up. Hi, Judy Emil. All right. Uh, Judy was here on Monday night. She did these cards already. Okay. Carpe Diem. All right. Let's look at. Nope, not that way. Oh, I bet it's this pink one way back here. I could see the pink. And then so pull out your Carpe Diem. I Judy loved the cards. Yay. So that's going to go over here. And that's it for this one, you guys. There's no other, that's all part of the card, okay? What's nice about these Memories and More card classes, you guys, is there's not a lot of stamping that you have to do because I pull in the stickers. So another card base. And we're looking for these pool party stripes now from the little pile. Let's see here, not there. Oh, I see it right there, actually. So I could see pool party sneaking out with my stripes. So that's there. And then you're going to go to my pile that I gave to you extra with a fresh freesia mat. And then this is that other one that we needed. And I feel like it should be like, I feel like chicken tonight, like chicken tonight. No, just kidding. Here it is. All right. That's the right one for over here. Now, the other thing too is you might like the leaves going up and those down and it's up to you how you want it. But that's the card that goes with this. Now, you also have these little schnibblins, the waves die, that's already pun, um, die cut for you. And I have a little white piece that goes over the top. That needs to go with that. Okay, next one here is this guy. The base, all about the base. You guys, polka dotties here. And now we're going back to the large card mat. So let's find that one. Oh, there it is. Hi, Sandy Wicklander. We're just going through all our pieces. All right, so there's that one. And there's a sticker on this one as well. It is the Celebrate Today. I got that hidden. <laughs> all right, so let's cut the Celebrate Today sticker. Put that on our pile. That's it for this one. All right, one more card base. Oh, we have two left. Okay, so here's one more card base there. And you guys can see it's a large mat. It's this guy right here. You only have three left at the moment, okay? So it's not many to look through, but this one goes on here. You should have a pink sticker left. So grab your pink sticker. And then there's a long white sticker. Okay, so cut that label off of here and put that on the pile. All right, we're getting down on the stickers too here. So let's keep working backwards. We have one more large base left, you guys. Your pile should be done now right here. No more card bases. Put that here. And you have two large ones left. And so you're going to use the one that's yellow. 
And then you're gonna look for the label or the one that says BU, which is all blue, right there. So I guess my thing for you guys is if there's something you don't like, you can rearrange how you want and make it how you like it. But like this is how I've got it and it's it's just, it's, we're gonna go through it how the cards were created, but just know you guys can change up anything that you want. <laughs> All right, so now we're done with our large bases. That's 10 set off to the side. Now we're gonna work primarily from my little pack that I gave you. You guys, it is in order of like, if there's a base, the mats and like the little bits and parts go with it. So like this is coral though. So instead of trying to separate all this out, what I would recommend you do is pick up a card base, pick up the card base, and then, oh, there's coral. Pull out what is on top of the coral, leaving that pile intact. So you have a coral card base. You have a white mat for your inside. This is the little strip of just jade that's gonna go behind the mat. And now we need to find two mats, two small mats, right? Our pile is dwindling down here. So we're looking for the congratulation, oh, um, we're, oh, this one right here. That one right here is the side one. I stamped the congratulations. So we're looking for an oval thing. Oh, Faye likes them as they are, awesome. All right, and there's that one right here. Okay, so that is our horizontal one. Now, it's hard to see it, but <laughs> we call it a little knob. There's a little knob hanging off the side there, you guys. I tried to use everything. <laughs> there's a sticker here that says today's events. That doesn't work so well with me, but we use the knob <laughs> for that on this card. It came out the back end over here, all right? So set that sticker with that one. All right, let's keep going backwards. All right, so now we have a black card base. So don't be confused because there's two blacks and there's two whites, but we're gonna do the one that has the pool party first. So you wanna go past the two white ones. Oh, but the pink one's there, so we wanna grab from the bottom. So. You have on this pile a black card base. You have a white mat for your inside. And I've already embossed your pool party mat for you and um, the painted textures. But we need two more things now with it. Go to your small mats here. And that enjoy for me was at the end. I, I knew it was back there. So you wanna grab enjoy. And you wanna grab this right here, um, the foliages. <laughs> That's this one right here. And the back says anything is possible. Now, like, let's say you like anything is possible. You could use that instead somewhere. It might not go with this one, but you could have pulled it in and made a different card and not done it like this. But that's what I've got on the bottom. Um, I think that's it for this one. Oh, no, there's a sticker here, you guys. This sticker right here, it's not, you're not going to see it in the picture because I used the sticker on the inside of my card. Okay, so... Take this, it matches it perfectly. These little blue balls, <laughs> they are blue. They're little balls at the end of the foliage. Um, those match this design really perfectly well. So I'm gonna put this little sticker on the inside. If you feel like you wanna put it on the outside somewhere, you can go for that. Okay, now we have another black card base. So you're gonna go to the bottom of your pile. And with this one, you guys, you have a, a black card base. You have your white mat on the inside. You have a blushing bride mat that I cut for you. And now these are where the deckled rectangles came in. I have a black one and a white one, and that is for this card. And there's one other, th oh, there's two things. The pink sticker flower, okay, or pink flower sticker. You wanna cut that off, save that. Um, hi, Gail Wearson. And then we also need two mats. We need that pink mat right here. I know it looks deceiving, but this all gets covered up and then we see the border. So that one you need, oh, and right there's the other one, okay? So that those are what you need, plus this pink sticker. All right, we're getting down. I think we have two left. <laughs> all right, so now you have two, this is really confusing too, because you have two white card bases and two green mats. The difference between the green is one's embossed and one isn't. You want the one that is embossed. So you have a white mat, I'm sorry, a white base. With the white bases, I don't include mats. So white base, and then you have your embossed green mat in garden green. And then you need the squigglies, and then life is beautiful. Nope, live life in full bloom, <laughs> all right? So, oh, I thought I, 
maybe that's going to be extra because I pulled in my other one from the other kit. Yep, you guys, remember if you were watching me earlier, I pulled this in from that other set and I shouldn't have because I must have missed it. Okay, so this one's left and this is where my instruction is not accurate. Um, oh, Andrea, one of these days you'll be on time. We're, we're just almost getting ready to create. So you have one white base, you have your green mat, you have a stitched rectangle. Now my pile is gone from there now, but this is where I was wrong. I put on here, um, adhere the mats together. But what happens is you guys have one of these left and the card looks like this. And so in the instruction, I need to add, cut this in half. So this is a three by six. And what you need to do is on the six inch side, you need to cut it at three. Okay, so not this way, but on the six inch edge at three inches, you need to cut it in half, right? So that's the step I need to add into this tutorial. I missed saying that. Um, I need to just put that the four by six or three by, it's, oh, I'm sorry, you guys, this is four by six and you cut it in half so it makes it two three by threes. And this edge gets used and then you flip this over and that's what creates, oh, I lied, you guys. Ha, huh, you think I'm funny. No, you, know, you, you think I may be crazy. This is the last card. Isn't that funny? That's what we needed for the last card. It wasn't extra. Oh my goodness. Okay. So cutting that in half and then that's your last one. So you shouldn't have any large mats left. You should not have any small mats left. Hi, Jean Benson. Put that here. Now for stickers, you should have, oh, we missed something. Hang on. So see, this is where you get to the end. And you're like, why do I have stuff left over? So this, we're not done though. This polka dotty sticker goes here. So that goes on this pile. And then you have all these black and white flowers. They go on this pile. And I never use this little dude. I just didn't find a spot for him, but we'll talk about that. This one, we missed this guy. He's actually hiding out <laughs> right there on the pink and black card. So when you get to the end, if you still have this and didn't catch it, you gotta just sneak this into the pink pile right there and just set it there. So do you guys see that I do not have any of my piles left and I have a nice little pile, little unit right there. Okay, so that gives us, takes us all the way back to a, the beginning of our PDF tutorial and officially we're gonna go from start to finish and we're gonna put these together. And before I do that, you guys, I need to take a second and go grab all the stamps. They're still sitting on the, car the counter from class on Monday night. So I didn't bring them over. So give me a second. You guys get your bearings straight, take a deep breath, and we're gonna start going to town. Hang on. All right, so I mentioned that I brought in the memento. I did throw in a blushing bride in case you do your insides. And then we have the misty moonlight. So those are the ink colors. And then here's the hand pen stamp set. Now hand pen is still available. The stamp set and the die is carried over. But none of the coordinating sweet products carried over. Okay, so when I worked on these cards, I only pulled in sentiments. I pulled in the thanks, anything is possible. If you want to pull in any foliage, you could. If you don't have the stamp set and you got this class, you don't need the stamp set. If you have anything with sentiments, that's really what you need. Um, and then some floral images for your inside. So are you guys ready to rock and roll and get this party started? Now that we have order in our <laughs> life. All right, so you guys, I am just going to set this pile. I'm gonna just, I don't know exactly. I'm gonna maybe move the light out in there. I'm gonna set that there. And I'm gonna try to keep the tutorial here. And we're gonna just roll right through this. And I need some colors. So we need some cut marker colors. Let's talk about that. Um, some of the colors that I pulled in, and I know that some of these are retired now, but it's okay. If you have any sort of greens, it's okay. But I pulled in the Just Jade. 
And I also had some mint. So there's some differences in with the greens. I pulled in Highland Heather. You could also use fresh freesia. You might want to bring in the daffodil for centers of your flowers. And then pale papaya. Now, if you guys don't have any of these colors, like let's say you don't do blends, you could always pull in something like watercolor pencils. You could also use ink, pam, ink pads with a blending brush. You could do water-based markers. You could do anything for coloring. So, but these are the primary colors that I used. They're basically florally colors for coloring flowers. <laughs> so, all right, we're gonna talk about these little stickers. So I just created a bouquet with them and I will be honest with you, I used that one and I used this big one right here. So this is that bottom one. This one kind of tucks up. And then I used this one. I really did only use these three. I have these still sitting. <laughs> They're stuck to the corner of my desk up in my craft room. I didn't throw them away yet because I'm like, I can use them for something. Now, if you feel like you want to sneak them in, go ahead and go for it and sneak them in somewhere. <laughs> so um, I'm going to just set this here. So I'm going to try to make a little room. So we do need to do, hi, Marianne. We do need to do a little coloring. So you're watching, Pat, oh, Patsy, yes, that is a great idea. For anybody that's new to watching me, especially with this class, because there's a lot going on, this one it might be best to watch so you exactly know what to do later on in life with the, putting the cards together. So I, so the, with the daffodil, um, you might go with the light one just because the dark is a little bit darker. And so I just am going to color in the flower centers on this one. And I don't even think I'm going to color in these bottom three because they got tucked in underneath. So I colored the yellow and I went with pale papaya. Now, like, let's say you don't have pale papaya, but you have a flirty flamingo or you have a different color. You guys are more than welcome to use any colors that you have that you think will look good. And I did more of a scribbly color with this because everything kind of was a watery color wash. I didn't, I tried to stay in the lines, but I didn't try to color absolutely every little area because everything looked mishy mashy, not mishy mashy, but watercolory. So I kind of did more lines and left some white space. And I definitely did try to stay in the lines though. <laughs> That's something that. I like to do so but okay so coloring those and I am gonna just color these maybe we can find a way to sneak a them in here and I'll do this little dude over here so okay so that's the pale papaya now this card mat is a is a garden green and if you I don't think they make garden green blends they have mossy meadow they have Old Olive, Mint Macaron, and Just Jade. So I think I'm going to do Just Jade for my leaves. And you guys, I missed the flower. No, I don't know if I did that one or not. So I'm going to use Just Jade. It, and I'm going to... It's going to be close enough in my eyes. So let's see here. All of these need... <laughs> so leaves and flowers are funny coloring because you think you get them all and then you go back and look at it again and you're like, oh man, I missed that one. So... Just give it a once over after you're done. So this one, most of that is not showing. And then this guy, we're gonna get the leaves stem right there. All right, and then we'll do this one just in case. And then I feel like I missed this center. Okay, the other thing on this one is you have a white stitched rectangle and you have this other sticker. We need to stamp the stitched rectangle, and then this sticker actually gets cut in half. You guys don't have to get your trimmers out. You won't see the cut edge, but you do need to cut that in half um, because they get put on each side. So you got all your stickers here. You got your little cut in half banner. We need to do a little stamping. So in this case, I did anything as impossible, anything is possible because I hadn't used it yet. And so I, you know, whatever fits here. Hi, Tracy Gruby. But you do want to make sure you stamp it to the right, not to the left, because you have to have something to position or secure your flowers onto. So I am going to actually use thanks stamp in this one. And 
I got my fingernail in there and we're gonna put it off to the right a little bit. So whatever you guys have for sentiments will work. We're gonna do thanks there. And um, the other thing is in the, um, to just be respectful of time because we have 15 cards to make and we're already 55 minutes in. I am going to leave my insides. Like you can see, I didn't even, <laughs> I didn't even do my insides on my samples. Um, just know when we're all said and done, um, go back and stamp your insides. Like there's this focal image that's, it looks like this is really blah until you see it. But up close, that would look really pretty in the bottom corner. There's some other things, but at the end, like that's when I would go through and just process all my insides. So um, we're going to now kind of assemble from the top down and just kind of get this card put together. So these little stickers, the thing with the stickers is if you peel this off, then they're sticky on the back side, and you might not want that. So you could, if you wanted, to keep it together, you could just cut around like this and um, follow the path. And then when you go to put this down, you could put, you know, basically we're gonna be gluing the top back here and now you don't have the competing stickiness because we use I use a dimensional there. So that's one option. Uh, the other option too is if you do rip it off and you end up with the sticker like this, it's really sticky. Um, what people can do is you put it on your clothing and just do this and that helps to take the sticker away. Uh, the other option too, I'm gonna go get it, um, uh, embossing folder, no, embossing buddy. The embossing buddy used to be in the catalog and they took it out like two years ago and it's back in the holiday catalog. Hi, Chris Niebaum. So to take and get rid of the stick, what you can do is take your embossing buddy and now like it doesn't, it doesn't stick. So that's another way that you can remove the stick from a sticker, okay? So I'm gonna grab Hmm, what do I want to do? I'm going to take Terran tape. I'm like, well, what's the easiest way to do this? So we're going to take Terran tape. I'm going to put it along the back edges here. And I'm going to attach the sticker to it. I'm going to try to center it. And then that will stick there. And then I'm going to do that on the other side. Like that. Okay, now... I think I popped up all of this, so I'm gonna prep this with some dimensionals. Let's see if I have some big ones. Mm, I've gotten so fond of the large dimensionals, and I do, yay, right here. Okay, so I'm gonna prep this with some, so you guys wanna make sure you get your stamping done before you put your dimensionals on the back, because otherwise, trust me, it really is hard to stamp once you have dimensionals on the back. Okay, so then, I'm gonna leave the stickers to the end. Hi, Brenda Loveless. Okay, we're gonna grab the rest of what's in here and we're gonna assemble the bottom part now. So you're gonna take your base and fold it. I should have it scored in the middle, but always double check your edges. You're gonna burnish this. Keep it horizontal. And then what we're gonna do is glue. Now, if you wanna be frugal and cut this and then use this backside for something else, you're more than welcome to but <laughs> I wasn't all about that. So I'm actually going to um, prep the backs of these with some liquid glue and we're gonna e adhere them. So I'm gonna make sure I keep my orange on the side and I'm going to try to be flush all the way. Now, I noticed here that I have extra green overage hanging here because I cut my mat just a hair under uh, whatever the size is here. So I am just because I can, and I'm a little pickier, I'm going to take and just trim off that hair just so it's not there. <laughs> and that rhymed. Okay. So you guys can do that too. If you want, if that ends up happening, you might have it spot on, it's, you know, you don't necessarily know. And then the stripes, I'm going to bring it to right where you see the white start, and then you'll never know. Um, I'm going to flip it. So it's this way. I noticed that my piece got a little ink or something on it. So we're going to put that right about there. Okay. 
And then this will get glued down onto here. So grab the liquid glue or whatever your poison is, your poison is for your adhesive, like pick your poison. I love liquid glue. And then that's gonna go on here. And this one, there's a little bit of, hi Elizabeth Ray. Um, there's a little bit of the Just Jade Gingham there. So let's grab that from our little pile here. We're gonna talk about how to do that. So you need to grab your tear and tape and you're gonna put down a piece and you're gonna have a piece on the side ready for you. And how I did this, so it's a loop and a tail. So, and I guess it doesn't matter which side you do. I ended up putting it this way, but so my, my orange ones are gonna get covered up. So do you like that? Here's the thing. Just know that if you put this like this, you're gonna see more blue at the top. But if you wanna see these two orangey flowers, you definitely would rather probably put that tear and tape on this side. And so we're gonna actually cover that up. <laughs> hi, Becky, hi, Betty. All right, so I just rearranged it so my orange flowers were on the top. And so I'm gonna take the end of the ribbon, secure it on the back, make my little loopy, and then I didn't cut myself or prep myself another piece here. Isn't that funny? That's not, this is why I prepped the extra piece because when you bring this back out, it doesn't have anything to really stick to. Hi, uh, Linda Rios, love that. Oh yeah, this, this gingham was so pretty. So there's nothing for it to stick to. So that's why you had that piece ready because then you could put it right over the top of it. Okay, and then grab your ribbon scissors and can cut your little tail off <laughs> just like that. Hi, Cheryl. Woohoo. All right. So there's the ribbon on this card. Now, you're more than welcome to add more ribbon. You guys, if you want to do ribbon it up more, go for it. So this now I'm going to put on with dimensionals. I usually use about six on, well, even actually eight. I would put right there and there in the middle. Okay. And put these there. And then this will get flipped over and I kind of have this centered. Well, it's actually, if I look, so it's the benefit of having the picture to look at, as you can see where I have stuff lined up. And so I have that lined up with the orange on that side, but centered top to bottom. Hi, Patsy Hudson. Hi, Laura Sullivan. And now what we can do is grab this one and we're going to take and add this to the card front. Well, that wasn't as successful as I normally am with my dimensional backs. And then I have this slightly hanging off the edge over here, like that. Hey, um, so Elaine, you just sent me a message asking if this is new. No, this is retired. This was the class that was an ad hoc class that got put on the books because you guys love the heart and home so much. And I had to make sure I got everything ordered. Hi, Susan Olson. I had to get everything ordered before the catalog retired because this, this product was last year's catalog. All right, so I've got my flower sticker like this. And then now I'm gonna take this sticker and this one goes off to the side here, making my little bouquet something like that. And then I've got this one. Oh, you know what, you guys? I did it actually. I went off to the side like that. Hang on, we gotta color one more. I just realized that I used more of this than I thought I did. Hang on. <laughs> no, you marked, I'm playing my markers off. This one needs to get colored because it's that one, I think, right there, if I'm not mistaken. So, you guys, you have all these little black and white stickers. Color your flowers and, you know, build your little arrangement. You know, maybe I'll go like that, and then I'm gonna put this guy coming out the top over here, and then we're gonna use this one over there. And don't kind of worry so much about, I wouldn't try to build it on here. I would try to build my, floral arrangement this way and now I'm going to be able to take this and set that down on here and I'm going to try to get it close so knowing this now I'm like well maybe I should have put my thanks over but you can still see that little orange tab over here 
And you have the ability to peel these apart and kind of refinagle them if you want to, okay? So as long as you don't push them together too closely. And you guys, I have that little dude left here. Let's just throw it on here and then we won't have any leftovers and he's gonna be right there. <laughs> All right, so let's get that off of there. And this is gonna now sit in here. So I have my big bouquet of flowers. All right, boom. So now you guys, what we're gonna do is we will do our opal rounds as we do the cards. That's always fun. And so I've got, so there's two sizes. There's big and small. And so I'm gonna grab a, a big one, small one, and then a big one, and a small one. And I feel like there's gotta be another one. Oh, right there. I put one right on the edge there of that. Now, the thing is, this is overhanging and kind of can be flippy with this embellishment. So what I will do when that happens, I will add, make sure there's dimensionals back there. And I like to do a little double stack because, I just threw away my dimensional, double stack because that's too high. We have a layer here and a layer underneath the orange. And so I'm gonna grab this and then I'm gonna position that kind of underneath where the embellishment is, and now it's not gonna get sunk in, okay? All right, we used up all those flowers. Yay, proud of myself. I should have done that with the other one just to do it, but I was afraid it was too much. So, but on all honesty, like, can't really tell that, that there's much different. <laughs> so, okay, we're done with one, woohoo. So I'm gonna set this one over here, and we'll set this one over there, and we're gonna work through to the next one. All right, so here's our next one. Pull this out, and what we'll do first is take our card base and burnish our edges. So we do not need these markers at the moment, so I'm gonna stack them over there. All right, so now this one, what we can do first is put a little adhesive behind here and then that now you can decide do you like your humpty humps going down or do you want your humpty humps going up <laughs> right so um i think i chose going this way for some reason but it's all up to you how you want to see it you do have a choice and then this will get adhered onto here i'm trying to make sure i get my corners lined up nicely and then on the back side here we're going to prep a little tear and tape and then we're going to put some of the, this one has two ribbons on it, you guys. So there's going to be Just Jade and the bow. So grab your Just Jade again. And you need enough to just secure the ends behind here. So you're going to just put, flip your tail that way. And then cut enough to be able to flip the tail this way. Good. And then I like to do... The extra round of tear and tape and pick that up. Hi Jeannie Parker, you're at Larry's house. Oh, we're celebrating with him. Yeah, that's so sweet of you. You will have these cards waiting for you whenever the time is right, my friend. So celebrate away. <laughs> All right, so this will go on to here. Like that. So we got our two white and green ones put away or done here almost. So this one, it's all stamped. I mean, it's not even stamped. It's all ready for you. Let's say you don't like live life in full bloom. What you can do is like, oh, maybe that would work. And then put a little label on here. You guys can mix it up and do something different if you desire. And then we're going to put some dimensionals on the back of this one. And then that will go right on the card front. Like that. I kind of centered it top to bottom, left to right. And then you're gonna need to grab a bow maker if you have one. I sell these in case anybody is interested, just reach out to me. They really do help in making bows, um, especially double bows. So double it up, so two times around and make sure you leave enough tail and then you're gonna cross them in the back. Well, it's the front, but it's actually the back. And then now this comes to the front of the bow 
and then you loop it down and now you just tie a knot and as you tighten it I go I go left right and then down and out like that and then makes a very very nice bow and it's a double bunny ear one so a little bit bigger so that's what I've got going on here and we're gonna put that on so like you've got this little flower ensemble so that's gonna go on with a little glue dot So, Jeannie, make sure you wish Larry a happy birthday from me. And have lots of cake and ice cream, right? So my tails are kind of doing this split thing. And I'm not so excited about that. So what I will do is I will help them along by putting a glue dot underneath them there. And then look at that one. You guys have officially used up a glue dot roll. Yay! Gotta grab another one. It's a good thing I keep my my adhesive stock right behind me so all right but the thing is when you do that make sure you don't throw your ribbon in the garbage like I just did I was so excited to throw it away so the ribbon helps to keep the the flap from unraveling so make sure you put that back on <laughs> not too tight otherwise it won't want to come uh, like it won't want to move and so uh, grab another glue dot and then show that tail who's boss right there. Show that, show that tail who's the boss. So you see that? It helps it to keep it going where you want it to. All right, so then we're gonna trim our tails. One and two, just like that. Buckle my shoe. And now we can do our opal rounds again. So I've got three on this one. So I've got a big one. And we're gonna do two small ones this time. So one right there. Ooh, it moves okay and then I've got one over it's <laughs> it doesn't want to stick oh I left the goo so you guys that happens sometimes you leave the goo on the the thing here so you got to put the embellishment right back on it and get the goo off you know make sure it sticks with the embellishment and then it'll stick to your card and then I'm gonna one right over there and I found a, per, a flower there so I put it right in the center of the flower um oh you're welcome Diana glad that that would help all right, so we've got our, sometimes too, you guys, like if your bow does something like that and it doesn't like to stay in place, just put another one behind it. Like they call me the glue dot queen sometimes because I, in all honesty, I will use five to six glue dots just for one bow to make it look like that. So, okay. Whew. Um, the done pile is over here. So just one more look at that. That was it for that one. Not so hard. The hard ones are all the extra ones that I make, guys. After that, that gets a lot easier. All right, so let's flip our page. And we're going to do the black with the pink next. So let's grab that. And we can score it. All right, fold it, burnish it. Make sure our corners get lined up and then burnish it. That always helps a little bit. And this one. All right, so that's a sticker. We do need to do a little stamping. We're gonna make this one a thanks as well. But I like to do, well, let's get some gluing. So we're gonna glue. Thank you, Cheryl. Oh, hi, Shauna. I hope you guys are staying out of trouble tonight. <laughs> yes, Hildy, glue dots are the best. So I'm putting this um, on the Blushing Bride card base. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Jeannie. Hi, <laughs> thanks, Shauna. All right. So that's that, and then we have a little white ribbon. You guys, it doesn't matter if you glue that upside down or not, it's about the same. And I did mine good though. So we're gonna put some tear and tape there, and this is gonna be basically the same process as that Just Jade one. We're gonna put a little white border, and I actually, I don't want to uh, do it halfway on, halfway off, because you'll see that, so I actually do want to butt it up right next to that card mat. And then I might not have put my tear and tape. Oh, I did, it's okay. So I put it right next to it and then there's no seam, which is good. And then grab the tear and tape, put that over the top again. And we're going to adhere that to our black card base. 
Now on this one, you guys, we talked about the insides. There is a white mat here for an inside. And hi, Vicki Fritz. I'm not going to, at the moment, um, do my insides. We're gonna see how long it takes to actually just make the 15 cards without insides. I think you guys can get the insides on your own as we go through this, but I'm gonna stick my inside. So yeah, at some point stamp that, get that put in there. And then this one gets put on with dimensionals. So I love the black with the pink. It is so pretty. So we're gonna put this one on right away. And then it goes kind of centered, top to bottom, left to row. Actually not, it's more to the left. You have to cover up that edge of this bump out of that labely looking thing. So you just kind of get right up to it and that's where you're gonna plant this guy, right there. And then I've got this one set up as a thanks as well. So grab the mat. Now if you wanna do birthday, whatever you want, you guys, I'm just pulling out the stamps that are actually in this set. Okay, so we need our Mementio and thanks. Again, it's more to the right and I did this a little bit north of the equator. So right above the middle mark and then something like that. All right, this gets glued to, so this is that deckled rectangle die, the new one. Let's get that out here. And they, it's awesome because those dies make borders. And so it, you can really layer it cool and add different colors and <clears throat> the deckling is awesome. So this now, you've got this stickery thing. And you could, if you wanted, do half on one side and half on the other. Um, I thought there was enough going on, like the sticker, you can take that off. That will go off to the side over here. If you wanted to, I mean, I just put the whole sticker back here <clears throat> and kind of wasted that. But if you want to cut it in half and put half on this side and half on that side, I don't see why not. Um, let's do that and see what it looks like. So I'm gonna grab my buddy, my buddy, my buddy and make this not sticky. So it's like a little chalk powder pillow. <laughs> All right, so there's that. Let's see what it looks like cut in half so you guys can make your, your own determination on what you wanna do. So we cut that in half and then we're going to use tear and tape again. This is one of my favorite cards, I think, out of the whole class because I love the black with the pink. So, oh, and I don't even have the sample here for you guys to see. So let's put that right there. And so I'm gonna put, don't worry, so you don't wanna get that Humpty Hump in there. So you're gonna put that right about there. And then this one's gonna go opposite side. Let's just see what looks better. And then what do we have here? Dimensionals on this guy. We're gonna do six of them. So this is another one with the double ribbon because we've got a little baby bow on our flowers. Because we did that powder on there, that made this so it won't really stick. <laughs> okay, and then this, <clears throat> I've got it centered top to bottom, but a little bit more to the right. And I don't know, the stripies kind of look cool, but they also get lost in, there's the difference. They kind of get lost in the black and white background. So either way, horse a piece. Now, this one makes a little baby bow with the Baker's twine. So my nails, I'm gonna go here, but I'm gonna pull, you know what? I'm actually going to use the two smallest little areas here. So grab your Baker's twine. I just had dominoes here that happened. I think kind of went flying. Uh, I did a little, I did a double bow actually. So another double bow, you wrap it around twice. And then you gotta go up and over. <laughs> the under might be hard because you don't have a lot of wiggle room, but because it's such a little area that you wanna make a bow, so I wanted little bunny ears. The black and pink, yeah, Deb, it's so cool. All right, so I'm making this teensy tiny little baby bow. And we're gonna trim our tails right away. And my phone is officially charged, so I can unplug that <laughs> and get it out of here. All right. 
So let's get that off of here. <laughs> it's the cutest, most adorable little bowl. Look at that little thing. He's a baby. Okay, and we're gonna put that on with a glue dot. So let's grab them. And I'll put the glue dot down where I want the bow to be. And then I'll put my little baby bow right in the glue dot. Right there. He's a little one. And this is ready for some opal rounds. So we're going to use a big in and a small one. And it looks like I've got a big one and a small one here. And then there's another one right there. So this one has five. And I know that the blue doesn't necessarily match because there's no other blue on here. And if you are really wanting to, you could have just used white baker's twine by taking the blue out and taking the silver off, but I did not want to go through the work of doing that. And if you guys have a different ribbon at home that you'd rather use than putting the blue on there, but I didn't think the blue looked bad either, but I was trying to keep it in the family. <laughs> so, all right, we have three of them done and we're cruising along now. Next card looks like this. And so it's the next one on the pile. And you have your black card base. You can go ahead and, oh, you guys love it. Yay. Here's the next card. No stamping that we're going to do on this one either because the card itself has um, the, the, right, the writing on it. So we're just going to prep this right away with the dimensionals. And, oh, that one started to come off, so I guess I'm just gonna take the rest of these off and set that off <laughs> to the side, <laughs> right there. All right, so we're going to adhere. So the back says anything is possible. <laughs> and then put a little liquid glue on here. Figure out which way you want it going up. And then this will go on here. Now this one, I use double ribbons again. You guys, when I have a whole roll of ribbon that I can work with, I don't just do one thing with ribbon. I do as many things as I can. So it's really hard to see it, <clears throat> but there is white ribbon right at the top and then there's just jade ribbon right underneath it. So what we're going to do is start with the white ribbon because that's on the bottom. And we're gonna cut just enough to, so our tails go over the edge. And I put that right over, it's like, it's not here because you would see through it. I have it actually up about an eighth of an inch so that it looks like it's all white there. And then the pool party's underneath it. But you need to get a little more tear and tape because the jade won't stick otherwise. So we're gonna put Thanks, Cindy. And then we're gonna grab an, the end of the Just Jade gingham here. And now that's gonna be lined up with the top of the Memories and More card. So right at the top of that. And then you don't see any of the texture of, or like the design below it. But we're not done because we wanna put, <laughs> it's like a triple sandwich here. And then little adhesive around the perimeter. And then I love the pool party with the black too, you guys, it was so cool. The pool party with black and the blushing bride with black. I love them. All right, as long as we've got this right here, I put this sticker on the bottom corner and that's my focal image for this one. So I'm just gonna leave that there. And now this was prepped and ready to go that can get adhered to your card. Kind of, uh, I did move it slightly more to the right because I have this knot thing right there. So, but to the naked eye, you might not even guess that, but so that's gonna go there. And then I don't know how much, maybe four inches, but whatever it is, I usually just go from the roll and I'll flip this into making a knot like that and then trim it so that I'm not wasting a lot of ribbon and Doris loves this one, yay. Okay, then a glue dot there, and then this will get planted right on that glue dot. 
that usually sticks nicely, but if it doesn't, you guys could use another glue, like let oh, I put them away. <laughs> if for some reason it's not, you could take another glue dot and put it right underneath there and that will help it to stick. Hi, Debbie Standuffer. All right, then you gotta tr trim your tails. And embellish. So this was another nice and easy. That's what's so great about these card packs, you guys, is <laughs> once you get them designed, then it's there's not a lot of stamping because as long as you don't mind using the cards for what they say, you should be good. I'm going to put that little guy right there. So, all right. We got our, what is this? Um, our fourth one done. Okay. Let's put this over here. And we're gonna put this one next. So let's flip the page, turn the page. All right. And I'm gonna grab this right here. It's our next one. Isn't it nice when they're all in order? <laughs> it makes it very easy. All right, so this one, burnish it. And this one, let's see here. I'm going to cut off part of this. Well, that's not good. This is why you don't put um, stamps on your nice card by your nice cards because <laughs> I got a little T on my card here. So we're going to put him facing the other way. <laughs> all right. I am going to flip um, cut some of this off so it's not all hanging extra. I don't I mean if you really wanted to be frugal, you could use this back end for something, but I'm going to let it go. All right. Hi, Crystal DeVries. And we're going to prep this. So we need some tear and tape. And we're going to do the lamb technique on this other side. So, oh, that's pretty here. So if you liked this one, you know, you have one more card like this. And you could use that to make a different card. So you have that old, whole other half a pack left to do what, with it what you want. All right, so then this, I'm going to take that sticker off instead of cutting it. And we're going to de-stickify this. Oh, thanks, Mitzi. Yeah. Gotta have those little details, right? <laughs> Take them over the edge. And so now you don't wanna get any of the, the words on there. So you're just, and I know it's green and green, but they're two slightly different greens. And so we're gonna put that kind of in the middle. Now, if you need to get the ruler out and measure it, you definitely can. But all right, now we've got this other side prepped with tear and tape. We're gonna do the lamb technique. And I'm just gonna leave it on the roll. And I'm gonna start on that end and just, you just weave it. You guys, I, I never look at the back while I do this. I use my fingers, all like, almost all my fingers. So here's the front, and then I bring it up, and then I feel till it catches the tear and tape, and then I bring it back up. And as I'm doing it, I'm weaving it to the right. Now, if you're left-handed, you might do it the opposite way, right? So, um, so then when you get to the end, you gotta be, can figure out what, if you're gonna make a big loop or a little loop or however, but that's the lamb technique. It's called the lamb technique just because my cousin Kelly lamb does it all the time. <laughs> and that's how we refer to it. And now you definitely do want to put the tear and tape right over the top of that to help keep that in, um, just secure. And don't know if I, I left mine on here. So look at this. I left mine on there just like that. You could peel it off. Uh, just depends how thick your ribbon is. And um, in this case, the ribbon felt really thin to me. So I was actually going to just put the dimensionals right next to it. Hi, Sharon Leanne. Hi, Angela. All right. So we're going to put these guys. Oh, and that one already came off. So now let's just prep this and we'll set it off to the side for the time being. That's pretty much ready to go. We'll put it right there. Now this one. You guys, in your kit, I die cut this for you. What that needs to happen is that needs to get glued on the back side here. So, um, oh, Hildy's been doing Kelly's lamb technique. Awesome. Thanks for sharing, Angela. I appreciate it. I'm going to put a little line of liquid glue here. And I want to see the stitching. So I'm backing off just slightly so I can see that stitching. And then just secure this on here. Patsy Husson likes the lamb technique. Yay. 
Yeah, I don't know. It could be called something else in other people's worlds, but it's just weaving ribbon back and forth is ultimately what it is. <clears throat> um, <laughs> it's just that when Kelly's talking about it, she just says, oh, it's the lamb technique with the ribbon, you know? And I'm like, oh, yeah, I know what that is. So then this is going to get adhered right onto our card base here. If you see that it's hanging over slightly, you can always take your scissors and trim that <laughs> and get that off of there. And then this will go down. And then now you have this. Oh, shoot, you guys. All right. I didn't stamp my sentiment. So this happened in class the other night. If you can, you can peel off. We're going to set that right there. I forgot to stamp congratulations. It's okay. We can make it work. So I took off the area where there's dimensionals here. It is a photopolymer stamp. So we should be able to see this and successfully... Um, stamp. We'll see what happens. So it's congratulations. I am not going to attempt to put the piercing mat underneath it because it'll stick all over to that. So I'm just grabbing congratulations. If you have any, I just thought it'd be cool. So Diane Bogenhagen forgot to stamp hers too. And she thought she would just hand write a little sentiment on here for whoever she's giving this to. So that's how I'm doing this though. <laughs> We're adding it. <laughs> all right. I'm going to move that stamp over there. And let's see what happens here. Okay, so we're just going to pick these all up. If you, so I knew that my countertop would allow me to pick these up. If You can't do that with paper underneath, though. All right, now we're back in business. Um, yeah, Patsy Roberts. So you guys, I have two Patsies. There's Patsy Husson and Patsy Roberts that you guys are both watching. And you guys both came into my life <clears throat> kind of in the last few months. So... <laughs> Isn't that funny? And Elaine Rebeck, if you're still watching, I have another Elaine that watches and is now my customer, Elaine Carlton. And so I, you're not the only Elaine anymore. You guys stamp an inside, <clears throat> decorate it, stamp a sentiment, and that gets glued on the inside. And then um, we're going to put an opal round there. And I'm going to put one there and one here. All right. Oh, we're not done. There is a bow here. <clears throat> yes. So Barbara, it takes a little practice on the lamb technique, but don't be discouraged. Um, my, I guess my tip for you is that you just, if you don't like it, you can kind of pull it off and redo it. Um, this is a double bow as well. Um, you will either use more ribbon by making your little, um, we I'll call them Humpty Humps. If you make them tighter, they you'll use more ribbon. And if you make them looser, you will use less ribbon. So um, if you don't like the way it looks, just peel it off and redo it. So made a little double bow here, you guys. Um, bow makers, you guys, the price did up, go up. So if you do need them, just know they're $8. You know, like everything in life right now is oh more expensive. I'd have to say 25 to 30% more expensive for whatever it is that I'm buying. <laughs> so just know my bow makers did go up. But I do sell the bow makers, you guys. I have a stockpile of them now. I just got like 30 of them in. And so if anybody's needing them, just reach out to me. I can help you out with a bow maker. So I'm going to put my little baby bow. I know, again, it's misty moonlight on here, but I think it still works to have the misty moonlight bow on there. And we have coral with jade and some mints and stuff. So, but there you go, guys. That is our number five. And <laughs> this is where an ink eraser does come in handy. And... You can see I got my little T on there, and in the blink of an eye, my little T is gone for the most part. I can work with that. All right, um, a die cut. Thanks would work also. Um, yes. <laughs> All right, so let's keep flipping here. We're going to do this guy. So we've got five done, you guys. We're a third of the way done with the cards. All right. So now we have, so now look at this, you guys. The card actually, it's just to me, a pool party with the yellow didn't look so hot. But hey, if you like it, you go for it. So what I did in this case is I put it on the inside, right? So just know that that is always an option if you want it like that. You don't have to, but... Um, that's what I did for this one. Oh, Doris said number five is really pretty. Yay. Okay. So we have our white top. We have our pool party inside and the card looks like that. So 
there is this banner here that says cultivate a good life. And what I ended up doing is putting this over it and all you see is the banner. There is some twine coming out down here and then a bow. So let's be conservative with our twine though because we don't need to like wrap it all the way around. Um, but what we wanna do is put some tape there and there. And putting the white on, putting nice idea about putting it on the inside. Yes, 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 yes. So don't ever feel like you have to use that the way that they have them on the outside. So we're going to start our tail here and then we're gonna catch the tear and tape there and we're just gonna weave it back and catch it right there and snip that off. So we've just really only used a couple inches, maybe four inches or three inches of ribbon versus wrapping it all the way around to get that look. And so now just grab some more tear and tape and secure that side. And you're gonna secure this side. I will peel this one off because I'm gonna be gluing this flat. And I'll leave the other one on, like the pa the backing, I was gonna say the packaging, the backing. So now this goes on to here and it pulls out the white nicely. And the reason I'm not pulling that off is because I wanna pop this up and I don't want that sticking to this. All right, so again, if you don't like the BU, you guys, you could put this here and then you could make your own little label like with the whatever dyes you have and put a sentiment on it. That would be really pretty too, but I didn't want to have to do more labels and more words, you guys. So I am using the BU and could make it into a birthday card, a graduation card, a thank you card. Uh, thinking of you card, uh, just encouraging card. And I have it set maybe like right about here. So I'm lining up on that. It's the right side, but I have it upside down. So it's left. All right, like that. And then we're going to prep with a glue dot and put that right where my bow is going to go. So that's ready. And we're going to make another bow. And this one is going to be that big. And I'm going to do a double again. So we're going to start. I'm right-handed, so we're going to do looping from that way. And then under, over, under. Get have all your tails in there and tie a knot. Nice and tight. Snip the ends. And there you go. You guys are getting the bow experience this tonight. <laughs> and you don't have to do bows if you don't want to. All right, so that goes on the side. And just trim your tails a hair. And we've got opal round action. So we've got five on this one. So I'm gonna do one, two, and then there's a little one that I put right in the middle of that, kind of the end there. And then another little one there. So the opal rounds really did go really nicely with all of these cards, I thought. Um, I thought it was a nice embellishment to add for these and it kind of goes with all of them. All right, you guys, that is, I'm thinking card number six. So be you. Um, there we go. Let's flip her to number seven. And okay, this one's a nice easy one as well. All right, so we're gonna stamp congratulations right away. Um, but my congratulations is doity. So we had the black ink going. I did pull in Misty. Now, if you want to use uh, memento ink on this one, it would not be a problem because the outline of the flowers is memento. But I thought it was nice to pull in Misty. So if you don't own Misty, just use black. Memento is fine. I feel like I've got a hot mess of stuff going on here. <gasps> I just want to move these away. <laughs> there. All right. We've got room for our ink pad. So it's the bigger white label. And it just has... So the congratulations fit nicely in here. If you have a different stamp set that you want to use that's a long, skinny sentiment, that's fine. Um, no problem, you guys. You always know I don't care. <laughs> Whatever makes you happy. 
All right, so there's our pink ink. I mean, our blue ink. Um, Patsy Roberts, love all the cards and need to stop and start making stop when making mine. Yes, exactly. So that is a good piece of advice, what Patsy just said. Um, what people generally do, and it's nice, I, I always have the Facebook replays. You guys, this is another one where this pool party will go on the inside. When you catch me live, you cannot pause and start and stop and start and stop. You kind of got to roll with me at the pace I'm going. But just know as soon as I hit the end button up here, this becomes a Facebook Live and lives on forever in the um, like Facebook. And then I also upload it to YouTube. So um, you definitely can catch the replay and do what Patsy just talked about, which is starting, stopping, starting, stopping. So <clears throat> that's awesome. So we're going to be putting, these are two stickers. They're very sticky. <clears throat> I'm going to line this up so it sticks on there. Um, maybe a little hair to the left more. Something like that. <clears throat> now, bossing buddy again because I want to pop this up with dimensionals. Give it a nice powder behind here. And I'm going to, so there's white ribbon down here. So this one's already colored for you. So you don't need to do any coloring on this one. And I have two ribbons on here as well. We have the white and the misty. I'm gonna prep the back here with some tear and tape. And because I don't know exactly where the ribbon, like I can guess, but here's a little tip that I have, that I, a little trick that I like to do. So I'm going to put my big dimensional at the top and I'm going to, I guess, take that dimensional. Oh, well, that's going to the garbage actually. Um, Yes, Feline said that. She likes to watch first and then add her own touches as she goes when she watches um, the replay. Okay, so I took off the top one, but I didn't take off the sides or the bottom. Now I can put this where I want it, which I wanted this bottom, like the pointy to be kind of at the bottom of that white. That's where I'm going for. And it'll stick because of that top one. Now I have the ability to put the ribbon exactly where I want it. And I will take off those dimensionals later on in life. Well, soon anyways, not like, not like 10 years from now, but um, let's see here. Here's our white ribbon. So we need to cut off enough. And now what happens is this can slide underneath here. Now you can position it just where you want it. And I wanted it like right so it's above the little peaky. So now I've got it where I want it. Can flip over and get my tails nice and snug back there. And then we're gonna do the same thing with the Misty Moonlight. So we're gonna have a triple tear and tape sandwich here. And so grab the end and cut just enough. And now this one can tuck underneath here as well. And if it catches on there, just lift it up because you can. All right, so that looks good to me. And now on the other tear and tape to secure that. You can peel those off and we're going to adhere this to the card base. And you guys caught that I put the pool party on the inside again, just because, I mean, it might have looked okay, but I thought it was very contrasting. Oh, it might look soft and nice and delicate. Let's see here. Um, I mean, it pulls out the greens of the leaves, but I'm going to keep it on the inside because I like the white with it. All right, so now we've got that down. Now I'm going to go ahead and pull off the backings of those, and now that will be nice and secure on there and then uh, you guys know what's next we're making another bow <laughs> oh. so we're gonna do a double again so flip that around hello mary ellen from montana you got your caddy yesterday yay and mary ellen i showed off this one was yours yep i showed off your card earlier tonight <laughs> Glad you could catch me here. All right, so secure, you're not really tight. 
trim your tails. And we'll adhere that one with a glue dot as well. So let's grab that. And put that, oh, that's right down here where the white and the pink meet is where I did this one. And then stick that bow right in the corner. And as I stick that down, I pull the tails down. All right, <laughs> you guys, opal round time. So this one has, oh, I see one, I see two. I think I'm missing my third one on here. Hmm. Hi, Mary Ostrich. Thanks for sharing, Betty Ray. I appreciate it. So we're going to put a third one there, I guess. And we'll put this one right here. All right, you guys. That one's done. I've lost track of the number. <laughs> and there we go. That must be number seven. Okay, so let's flip over and go to number eight. So this one is where we get into some coloring. So let's fold that and this is another stick. So this is a sticker and we need to do coloring. So what do we have for coloring here? Let's put this down here. Um, I did do just, let's pull the card here so you guys can see it. So we've got just Jade. Um, if you're into the two-toning of the stamping, you could do the Just Jade on the veins. Like, that's how I would do that. Oh, yeah, this this hand pen, these colors were super soft and delicate. So that's I did for the dark. And then when I do the light, I make sure to go over the dark. And so we're gonna just go around, I go around in circles because I'm right-handed. So my tip of my marker colors really nicely when the edge is on the left. And so I always am flipping my cards around as I'm coloring. Sometimes it's smart to do all the left edges at the same time. And so this is just Jade. Now, if you have mint, that probably would look pretty too. Um, I definitely don't know if I would go with an all, old olive or a mossy meadow, but the mint actually looks really soft and delicate with this too. So mint would be my second choice. And if you don't have these Just Jade markers, you could use the ink pad if you had it, um, or you could use the um, like a blender pen, and you could do um, an ink pad and just dip your blender pen in the ink. Okay, so we've got some yellow centers, and I did pale papaya. So sometimes what I do with my, I did some pale papaya, oh, I did Florida Flamingo. So pale papaya was the big flowers. And so I just did the darker in my flower centers like this. And then I would use the light one to color the whole thing. And again, if you like to just do everything all one color and don't want to do any blending, that is quite all right too. But I thought that the pale papaya was nice to have for the bigger flowers because it pulled out the pale papaya from the Celebrate today. And sometimes what I'll do with the blending, I, I'm, I try to make sure I go over the dark area, but I'll go back and do a second coat of this color so that it blends even better. Because right now when I look at it, it still kind of looks streaky. Um, I can tell that my pale papaya has been loved <laughs> somewhere in the past. Um, and so it's not as juicy <laughs> as it used to be. It's kind of a little dry. <laughs> so I'm trying to be sparingly with it. And we'll come back and do a second coat here in a second. But like, if you look at it close up, you can see it looks kind of splot, a little splotchy. And so what I'll do is, now that it had a second to dry, because they are markers, they're, they're wet, you wanna give it a second to dry, and you can go back over it. If you keep doing this 
over and over, sometimes the markers will bleed, or I shouldn't say the markers will bleed, but the ink will bleed and it'll go outside the lines. And so it's nice to do a little bit and then go over it. So you can see now the bigger flower is a lot smoother with that second coat and that first flower still needs a little love. So we'll go over that a second time. Yeah, you know, I have no idea how you would do a refill for a blend. Like they don't even have the refills for stamp and write markers, but you could figure out a way to add the ink refill to it, I'm guessing, but I wouldn't even know the first thought about filling up one of these markers without breaking the cover. Like it's really hard to pull these out. Sometimes they come up, but otherwise, and you gotta be careful because it dries out if you have any air that can get into it. Okay, so these other ones are gonna be Flirty Flamingo. So, <clears throat> Flirty Flamingo, I did not pull that out earlier, but if you have a pink, there are lots of different pinks. So let's just grab, not that end, but let's see here. Ooh, that's dark flirty flamingo. I am just gonna do that one like that. And I <laughs> think the rest are gonna be a light. So there is a little tweezer made to pull them out. I use it with your Copics. Oh, got it. Okay, that makes sense. I never got any alcohol blends except for Stampin' Ups. So I have no knowledge of any other brand, actually. You guys see how bright that was? And what I'm doing now is going over it with the light one. And that helps to subdue that, how bright that was. And it kind of looks cool then because it has a little darker center. But for the rest of these, I decided to go with the light flirty flamingo and just keep it simple. All right, so... Boom, we're done with our coloring, guys. <laughs> that was good. I'm not a big color or er. -er. So, um, celebrate today is done already. I'm thinking it's hiding on me under here. And we need to put some ribbon down. So we're gonna grab the tear and tape again and prep the back. So there's two ribbons again. It's I have the white one there, and then I have the just jade gingham. So I'm thinking about this much. So we're going to put this right about there. Now this is another one. It's harder to do the, what I did with the last card where I put the dimensional at the top and left the others because this one really, it's half on the ribbon, half off the ribbon. So I am going to guess on this one where to put the ribbon. And I'm going to use that as a guide right there. So we're going to cut some white ribbon. We're gonna cut the gingham ribbon. And do white first, white's underneath. So the white, so those two leaves go at the top. And then my white ribbon, there's this little corner right there. I've got it right above that little corner. And I feel like that's crooked. Oh, it is crooked. So that one's up higher than that one. So. And I can tell it because I put my ribbon straight and I can see more there than I can see there. So if they don't have a, they're not even. All right, so that's going to go. I'm going to say like that. I just rather, would rather my ribbon straight. Oh, and I missed it. Oh, you guys, I put my tear and tape on the wrong side. Ha ha. I'm like, that's not sticking. <laughs> It would help if I put the tear and tape on the right side. Hi, Deborah. All right, so this guy is going to go. Now we're going to try this again. So get that lined up right about there. And we got to put a little more tear and tape down for our Just Jade. And the Just Jade hangs out right above it. So put that, so you can just see that white hanging out right below it, like an eighth of an inch. Hello, Donna. And then this, more tear and tape, you guys know it, is going to get adhered onto the card base. 
And so add your glue or adhesive. You guys, when I say adhesive or glue, it could be whatever you want. It doesn't have to be liquid glue. It could be a, a um, tear and tape. It could be tape runner. It could be whatever you want. All right, then this. I'm going to de-stickify this one as well because I want to put some dimensionals on it and pop it up. So we're going to put <laughs> powder it's behind, like that song in 1814. We took a little trip <laughs> down the Mississippi to the town of something, New Orleans. <laughs> All right, so guys, I cracked that one up. Mickey Mouse used to sing that song with Donald Duck <laughs> back in the day <laughs> when I was a youngster. All right, so here we go. This is going to get centered. You're going to see that green ribbon. Something like that. All right. I tried to get the dimensionals to hit the ribbon and to hit the paper so that it wasn't all flipping on me. And this one, there is um, a, dimen a dimensional, a opal round at the top, two of them. And then there's a flower right down here. And I put it as the center of the flower right there. And if you feel so inclined to color the outside with your markers and colors to give it decoration or to pop, make it pop, you could. Otherwise, you'll just leave it black and white. And so at the end, remember to do your inside. All right. This one is one of my favorites, though, too. I love this card. Oh, man. This one makes me happy. So, all right. So we're going to flip this one and grab the next card on your pile so this is a little white piece that fits into your pool party and then we can go ahead and fold this burnish it and let's go ahead hi wendy westmoreland we're going to put tear and tape at the top of this and secure our ribbon behind so I'm gonna get that ready and we're gonna just put that onto our card base right away. And so you need enough Just Jade ribbon to wrap your tails around. Now this one goes flush at the top of this card. So just get it lined up nice and then flip your ends over and do the same thing on the other side. And I do like to put tear and tape over that again. And then that's gonna get glued flat onto the pool party polka dotty base. So we got one thing done here. This one we have a little coloring to do. <clears throat> so that nicely fits right there. Okay, and then um, <clears throat> just because I can, I'm gonna glue this to the purple right away so that the marker has something to seep through if I need <laughs> the color more. So let's get that glued on here. And now this one, I feel like I used the mint macaron marker to color the leaf. So let's see what that looks like. Um, and I think I might have used the light mint. Let's see what the light mint looks like. Yeah, the light mint is super soft and it kind of matches with the pool party better. So I went with light mint uh don't even bother to color the bottom flowers because they will get covered up and i pulled in the daffodil delight lighter one for the centers and then if you want i kept it with you know so the base or this mat here is fresh freesia so if you have fresh freesia markers you could do that but i did use highland heather just so that it wasn't another set of markers that you guys had to have so i'm gonna just do some little lines of the dark highland heather and then i'm going to use the light highland heather to color the whole flower and then now fresh freesia will match the base or this card mat underneath a little bit better but again if you don't have you know not everybody got fresh freesia but maybe people have the purple the highland heather that works out good so let's get that you guys see I go round and round in circles all right so there's that this marker is very juicy so I can tell that I might not 
The only time I would really do a second coat is if I need to blend a little bit more. So get those lines out. All right, so let's keep her moving here. Yeah, this marker is much better for me than my pale papaya was. And get those flowers. So now the other thing too is if you guys have different gems at home that are yellow, that would look super cool in the middle of these flowers. I could see putting some really cool yellowy gems in the middle. All right, almost got this. And, and then we're on the font. Oh, we got a stamp of sentiment on this. So I think I'm gonna do thanks again. It's always good to have thank you cards. All right, so there's our purplicious, expialidocious, and then memento, thanks. And we're gonna stamp that in here. Stamp that right in there, okay. I'm gonna move that one off to the side. And we're gonna glue that onto the front of our little label. So the front of the label is more smooth and rolled and the back is a little rougher. So that gets put right here. And then you can see there's white ribbon that comes out the sides here. So grab the tear and tape. And this is how I like to do it. I'll put, especially because I'm using two lines of ribbon, I will put two lines of tear and tape. And we need white ribbon. So let's just see how much this is. So just to eyeball it, like let's say we need that much and that much. Didn't want to cut. Okay, so we've got two pieces of white ribbon. And I'm on the back side now. What I'll do is, because I have my tear and tape, I'm going to set this one down. And then I've got a little bit of tear and tape left there. It's going to stick to it. And you know what? Just to be safe, we're just going to put one more little strip of tear and tape onto that white ribbon. And now it'll stick even better. <laughs> All right. So now you've got those. And what you can do is just push your tails up through it. You gotta get both of them though, not just one. And you can kind of separate them a little bit. And then do the other side. And because you offset them, one should be a little lower than the other one. All right, this guy, we're gonna pop him up and then we're gonna pop that up right on top of it. And then we'll have another one done. And as long as I have dimensionals in my hand, so, I'm getting to the end of my sheet here. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll start cutting my sides here. And that's awesome because it gives me a strip like this. Whoa, that's not what I wanted to do. So we're gonna put that right back. So what I'm gonna do is take this one and I'm gonna cut it in half and I'm gonna try to catch the edging of the paper along with some of the ribbon. And so this is a good purpose for those long strips. All right, so. We can pick everything off. Bonnie says it's a great card, yay. All right. I am definitely going through the dimensionals tonight, guys. Woo, all right. So this will get put on here. And then this gets put right here. Oh, I love this card. The purple with the pool party, just, yeah, so pretty. And then how you want to trim your ends, right? It's up to you. Um, I'm going to take this one and hold it down while I cut it. And then this one, you can make it a little longer or make it about the same, but you don't want to cut that one while you cut this one <laughs> accidentally. Right, so there's that. And then I'm going to have these going the same way. So let's cut this first one. And we'll cut the second one. But I liked it having two because the ribbon is a little thinner and more see-through. This way it gave it a little more bulkiness. And <laughs> so weird, a one, two, three, four. How do I only have four on there? I feel like sometimes my gems fall off <laughs> on me and then I find them on the floor. 
And that's why I only have four. I feel like there should be five, you know, because we always like odd numbers. So where are we going to put our fifth one? Let's put it right there. All right. <laughs> Looks too random there, you guys. Do you ever have a hard time with the embellishments? Maybe right there. All right, there. Huh? I love this card. This one was one of my favorites. I love purple with the pool party. So stamp your inside, decorate your inside, get her done. And... We're gonna keep her moving. This one's really simple. So grab this one next. All right, so fold it. Lynn says it's a cute card, yay. Okay. That Cindy, you guys like this one. Cindy said it's pretty too. Okay, so there's our base. And we're gonna glue this mat down right away. We have like a short condensed lamb technique <laughs> on this next one. Um, Doris likes the color. Yeah, that purple with the pool party is awesome. So this is like a short, short version of the um, lamb technique. So we're only doing a little bit in the middle. So, and it's the white ribbon. So we do, I didn't want to do the whole thing, but we're just going to do loopy and then a loop and then a loop. And that's it. We're just, oh, and I ran out of tear and tape. So got to make sure you have enough tear and tape to complete the job. So, and one more loop. I kind of went up too high. So all you guys got to do is just start a little lower. You just pull it off and make a little loopy. Let's see if my tear and tape will hold. And we'll do one more. Boom. That was better. It's a little bit lower. And then, see, that's how you do it. You just pull it off if you don't like it. It's okay. It's not like pulling out hair. It doesn't really hurt the paper, I don't think. So, I'm going to leave that like that because we're going to pop up the rest. Like that. Because this ribbon is super thin, I don't want to have it sticking there. And... This was a nice, easy one, you guys. This goes right onto our card base. Got it kind of up and to the right a little bit. But we do have a bow, so we got to make a little baby bow. So there's that. And there's a little bow in the flowers. I didn't even bring this card in. There's the sample. And we're going to do another little double bow. <laughs> one, two. Go all the way up to the top. As my bow maker gets loved, my nails don't fit in the hole so well and they start to go like that and so i get more sizes of bows i get small at the top and i get large at the bottom and trim those and i'm gonna put that on with a glue dot all right put it right where you want it and then stick the bow to it as I stick the bow to it, I pull my tails down because that seems to help with that. And Luann Johnson says I'm frozen, but I do not see that I am frozen. So I don't know if anybody else is frozen. If you guys are, let me know, but I am not. So I'm going to keep on rolling, rolling down the river. All right. We got this one done, you guys. And the next card on the price is right is going to be... Ooh, this one's pretty too. I like this one a lot. All right, so pull your next pile of cards. So you guys, our pile is getting lower, lower, lower. All right, Doris says she's not frozen either, Luann. So it must be something with your phone, I'm guessing. All good for Deb Norman. All right, so we've got here a thanks. And we're going to do, yep, everybody else is okay, Luann. So it must be something with your phone that is having issues. All right, so we're going to stamp thanks on this one as well with our, wow, that's hard to see that. <clears throat> so it's really hard to see the outline. So I am just going to get rid of that and stamp my thanks. And then I can, thanks Shirley, I'm gonna pull this up <laughs> and we're going to de-stickify it because this is going to get popped up here. Oh, Patsy lost on her end, but she's back on. So, yeah. I appreciate you guys saying when it's frozen, though, because sometimes 
I will be reading your comments, but not looking at the video. And so I won't see that it's frozen. <laughs> so, all right, as long as I got this little piece in front of me, I am going to get my dimensionals on it. So it's prepped and we're gonna take a chance and set it off to the side right there. This piece just needs to get glued onto the Highland Heather piece. So this is what? This is the story. Yep, that's going on the back side. That gets put right on here. And we have our dimensionals handy, so we're gonna go ahead and pull those out and put them on. And we're gonna take a chance and take these off here. Oh yeah, Shirley, you're welcome. Always like to give you all the insider information. All right, we're gonna leave that sit for a second right there. This is the same concept with the ribbon as one of the previous cards. Uh, we're just going to put a little tear and tape. It's white. Oh, you guys, I don't even have the card here. Ha, huh. we're gonna put that right there. It's got white ribbon and then the, the jade ribbon. And I noticed that I went smaller spacing to large, but you might like having the larger spacing to skinnier. So I didn't notice that when I was putting the card together originally, but I just noticed it right now. So we need some just jade and about that much. And then we need some white. It's so weird working off a whole roll of ribbon, isn't it? <laughs> Usually you guys get like just enough, like you get this much. But when you have the whole roll of ribbon, you guys can work with it and use more or less if you want. All right. You know why I did that? I think I did. I actually left the large at the top because when I put my ribbon up here, you don't see that line is down far enough that you don't see it. Where if you put it up here now, you'll see that line through it and it's distracting to me. So Elsa, Anna, and Olaf are frozen too. Ha! <laughs> yes, they are. Ha! <laughs> All right, so we're gonna redo this, you guys. I am going to put my wider um, line action at the top. <laughs> All right, so let's put that here. So the white ribbon goes all the way to the top like that. And because we're doing just jade next, we need more tape. This will be like another triple decker here. Oh, I hardly got any on that side. So we're gonna do this one going up and down just to catch it. And we got to use the Just Jade, and it's going to be down slightly, but above that white line, so that you don't know that white line is there. And I like things to be straight, guys, so we're going to get that right there. A little bit more tear and tape. What's nice about this one is they colored for you. <laughs> Yay! I think there might be one, oh, the next one we have to color. So there's maybe one more, maybe two, but I think we're getting down to the end here. So this gets put, and I don't even bother to put adhesive here. The, the other is gonna go right over the top of it and hold that down. So there's that, we prepped this. I am looking at that line of polka dots there and I didn't want to see half of it. So I put it right so that you don't see that line and it's centered between those two columns of polka dots. And then our thanks is ready to go. And that's like right about there. <laughs> One more bow, guys. Are you all bowed out yet? <laughs> I'm getting bowed out, you guys. I am so happy I did not have to make all these bows for each and every one of you. You guys gave me a break. <laughs> because whenever it's a product-based class like this, I do not make the bows. But when it's uh, like the monthly class, the sweet class, or let's just stamp, and it's where I provide little individual pieces of ribbon, I make your bows for you. So sometimes I'll be making 88 bows for a class. <laughs> but when it's product-based and you guys get your own roll, I don't make your bows because I don't open up your ribbon. So this guy is going to go on a little glue dot right in the corner. And voila, wait, we're not done. You guys should have half of your opal rounds left, I'm guessing. 
when it's all said and done. So you would have enough to do another because we're getting down to the end and we're only about halfway through the opal rounds. Oh, that one didn't even come off. You gotta be careful to make sure you get that adhesive under there. All right, so we're gonna do one there, a big one right there and one there. Now I can say, voila. That one's a nice one too. I love how the yellow, like this bottom brings out the yellow, like that brings out the, like the blue of your eyes, right? It brings out the yellow of the flowers. <laughs> All right. Let's flipper the page. And now we, oh, we have two more to color. Oh my goodness. Okay, so two more to color. And one, two, I think we have four left. See, we're cruising through these. Oh, Lynn loves the wood, wood block bow maker. Yay. Okay. So fold this one in half. And the ribbon is about, where does the, cel oh, celebrate today go? I think Becky, that one was right here. Becky, that was this card. Um, it was, uh, so we've done three since it. So it goes back on the flowery card, the one that you had to color. All right. Now, we're gonna do the same thing. Oh, we gotta color this one, but we're gonna glue it right away and we're gonna prep the back with tear tape. You guys, can you tell I'm getting to be it's two hours and 15 minutes? I'm starting to get hungry because I didn't have dinner before class. And so I'm like starting to go a little bit faster because I think at this point, you guys are generally getting the concept of what we're doing. Uh, we need just Jade for this one. And I think we're down to four cards, so we're, we're doing good. I know it's a longer class than normal, but we are making 15 cards tonight, you guys. So that is part of the process tonight. <laughs> so we're going to do tear and tape on the back of this one as well to secure that a little more. And this one, we don't have any sentiments to stamp because it's stickers. All right, but we do have a little coloring, so let's... Okay, this gets glued, and then this gets a little bit of adhesive. This goes at the bottom. I love these colors together, too. These, all this hand pen was so soft and delicate. All right, so that goes there, and then this will go here onto our Pale Papaya. They should have been around when we made 18 cards. Yeah, you're right. I think um, 18 was the gingerbread class, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I feel, and Heart and Home was 16. So you guys, these uh, Memories and More card classes, I don't necessarily know how many cards it's going to be until we lay out all the pieces. And I believe the texture cheek, chic one that's coming up next is going to be 15 again. So it's just how the card mats all work out with layering and what we add in for different mats and bases. All right, I'm not gonna color that stuff because I believe it gets covered up, but we're gonna go to the light one. And this is the marker that doesn't love me right now because it already gotten um, used and abused. And so I may do two coats with this one, you guys, in case you're just tuning in. My marker's a little dry but we will make it work. You can tell that it's time to get a new one of this one. <laughs> it's just not loving me. All right, so we did a coat and we're gonna come back and we'll... You can hear it's really squeaky. It's not really um, juicy. <laughs> oh man, I almost should do the whole thing in the dark. Ooh, let's just do one more. Let's finish, all right. Oh, Becky, you're very welcome. I hope that's what you were looking for. All right. Yeah. So scrappy that looks. It looks like the light in the dark is not going so good. But when as soon as you go over it with a second coat, it really does the magic. So we're going to do, we're going to practice our patience. And we're going to go round two. And put this on, and then as soon as you get that second coat on there, it, it comes together a lot better. This is where having a refill would be awesome because my tip is pretty good yet. It's just, you can t tell that it's been used. 
All right. And call that good. All right. So more dimensionals, you guys. So we're almost done. I started the sheet of dimensionals tonight. Let's see if we end up using it up. All right. So there we go. And here. Two and there. So that will go down onto our card base. Let's see if I get them all. I did. Except for that one. And you got some flower stickers for this one. So this will go down here. Same thing. I'm looking at where my polka dots are. And I'm kind of centering it between those two columns and below that second row. Um, so we have stickers here. So this one, the bigger one, and then the smaller one. <laughs> this is trickery. I didn't write this in the instructions and I just realized what I did. I cut these apart. I promise you I did. Because if you go to put this on here, the leaf is hidden. And so what I did is I cut that off and I put the yellow flower there and then I put this leaf right there. <laughs> I MacGyvered my flowers, okay? So it looked better having it like that. So now this one is another one where we need to use the embossing body or your jeans or your shirt, wherever you just need to de-stickify. All right, and then that gets popped up with dimensionals. Hmm, I think I might just use that. Let's see once what happens. We're gonna put that right through the middle. Okay. And so this thing, I gotta use both hands here. This is gonna go right about there. And then I'm gonna secure that side, but hold up this side and tuck this little one underneath. And that's how you do that one. Okay, let's add some embellishments. This one I've got three, so I've got one, two, and then we'll do a little one right there. All right, you guys. Got one more in the books, so that's whatever number <laughs> that one is. Um, well, if we have three left, that must be 15, 14, 13. <laughs> All right, 15, 14, 13, that was number 12. All right, so number 13 here. I really like this one too. I, I definitely love the pool party with the, with the purples. All right, so let's go ahead, fold your base in half and I make it look so easy. <laughs> Well, you know, I will tell you, the reason that happens is because I did design, the, you know, I put the cards together and then I wrote the PDF tutorial and then I had class on Monday. And so I've been through these cards probably three times, you guys. So that's why it's good to watch. That's why a lot of people say it's just easy to watch the first time with me live. And then you can always go back and watch the replay. Back gets glued on here. And then this one, I tried my best to make sure you got like a little scallop with a little bit of hang on this side, okay? So this is gonna get glued down. Oh, that's those love grows here. So maybe you like that better and you rearrange, but I'm good with it behind. And so I wanna see my little stitching on that side. And then you should have a little bit of purple hanging off to the edge here. Now, <laughs> The lamb technique is done on this one as well. There's all the way up and down the side there. And then we've got a sentiment stamped on your little pool party sticker there. So you put the tear and tape down this edge here. Never worry, you guys, if your tear and tape hangs over the edge. Don't try to cut it. It doesn't make sense to do that. All you have to do is when you take that off, you just fold it right back. And then it's awesome because you have your tear and tape all the way to that edge. All right, so I always start at the bottom, it seems. And we're gonna just weave this. You guys see, this is how I do it. I, 
I feel with that index finger, catch the tear in tape. I wish you could see the back side as I do this. <laughs> Lynn says that I'm fast with the dimensionals, yes. Um, here, I'll show you on the next thing, a little trick I can do with um, dimensionals. So that gets cut and I gotta make sure I'm not hanging over the edge up here. Perfect, okay. Then, let's show you some another dimensional trick in case you need help with dimensionals. If you don't have a fingernail, like my fingernail, you guys, I just broke this. Like, can you see how short this nail is? It cracked under the nail bed down here and it's finally the, the, the like that ridge was down here. It was a pain in the butt to do anything with. I promise it's not good. So, so for if you guys have been watching my live videos, like the last few weeks, I've been using that. When it first happened, I was using that pick tool all the time. So let me show you the pick tool. So you grab this tool. This is Diane Bogenhagen taught me how to do this. You take the pick tool closer to one of the edges. You get that underneath there and it picks it up for you just like that. And sometimes you can go one, two, well, two. Sometimes you can get three of them, but um, that pick tool is a really handy tool if you don't have nails to get your dimensional backs off. Okay, it, hurt. it, it did, it was really, I don't know why it cracked. I, like, I hate when my nails crack. Usually it's my pointer finger though, but All's good now. All right, so now that is prepped, ready to go. And we're gonna put this off to the more to the left side. Like something like that. We will color. So let's color, we're gonna do purples again and yellow centers. So grab yellow for the middle of your flower. And then I think I'm gonna pick just jade light for my leaves. And if you want to attempt to try to do the stems, go for it. <laughs> There's not a lot of room for the stems, but if you want to see some green stems, you could just draw in some green like that. And then just to keep things simple, I'm going to just do, I want to do light purple. So let's grab the light one. The light one I think will be dark enough. So... This one, the paper is Highland Heather. So the Highland Heather blends will, should be pretty perfect with it. <clears throat> what color, it says a light Highland, that looks different. I wonder if it'll dry different because I could have sworn that was Highland Heather. <laughs> so, all right, purple, any kind of purple will work. So there's that. Even flirty flamingo flowers would be pretty, pale papaya flowers on this one. You guys pick, purple's my favorite color. So I generally try to make everything purple. <laughs> If you haven't noticed, so we're just going to color these guys. And then we do have a sentiment that we need to stamp on this one. And um, instead of anything as possible, I am going to do a thanks again, I think. I love having thank you cards on hand to send out when I need to send thank you cards. So, boom, that's done. And... We're going to, since this is blue, let's see if the thanks fits in here. I think it should. And we're going to do the same thing. I'm taking it off of that sticker. And then I'm going to try to stamp it on the piercing mat. Here, the pierce mat. Ah, thanks is going to be too, oh, it might work. The T might go down off, but I'm okay with that. So there, thanks a lot. Thanks. To him over there, peel that up, and this one is flat, but a dimensional on the right. So let's. Oh, here I got some right here. Let's cut that one. And so I popped it up on the right because that's overhanging, and that'll go right about there. All right, now we gotta zhuzh it up with some. Opal rounds. One. Down my shirt. Let's see. It's stuck on. 
from me somewhere. There it is. <laughs> I found it. All right, there's that. And then I've got three up there. So one, two, three. Okay. How are you guys? Number 13, Anito. And let's put that there. We have two left. The easiest two cards, I think. No, that there were some other easy ones, but the I left these. These are so pretty too. All right, so fold that, burnish it. <laughs> yeah, I am brave. I, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I. So the reason I colored this after I had it all glued down is because, um, sometimes the ink markers will bleed through and I thought well if it bleeds through to this base or that mat then it wouldn't be bleed through to my countertop <laughs> so all right we need the tear and tape underneath here and we're going to put some gingham just along the bottom and it's a long strip of gingham though so let's cut off what we need so something like that to that. Grab the ribbon, scissors. Now, now, see this was pretty too. Where flowers bloom, so does hope. That was really pretty. This is such a long area. I am, I don't generally put tear and tape on the front of a card, but I will in this case because otherwise it is gonna be flippy floppy. So let's put this down like that. And then and fold that edge over. It makes it look like they're planted in grass, right? Because otherwise they were growing out of the bottom of the page. I thought by adding the Just Jade ribbon to this that it would actually look like they're growing out of something, <laughs> like grass. Not dirt, but grass. All right, so that's the back. While I have this here, I got the tear and tape right there. I'm gonna take my sticker off, you guys, and this is another one where we need to powder it. And I'm gonna just, as long as I had the tear and tape right here, I was gonna prep it with tear and tape behind, just back here. Okay, I'm gonna set that off to the side. Now let's go back to this and this gets adhesive. Oh, I feel bad covering that up. <laughs> That's how it goes. All right, so this goes over here. Something like that. Now you're probably wondering, where did I get that ribbon? It's actually the white ribbon and it's colored with a blend. So you only need to cut off and like you just take what you need, maybe that much. And I would suggest putting something underneath while you color. So I did use just jade and I'm gonna try the light one. When I do color ribbon, I go very slow so I don't wreck my marker tip. Any green would be good too. There's like, if you don't have just jade, um, the mint would work really good. I don't know about old olive, but you could make a purple one if you had purple. But I go slow with this because I don't want to demolish my marker tip. And I'm just going to weave that back and forth. Like that. And that colors the ribbon. So I think Stampin' Up! has a lot of different white ribbons because you can color your ribbon. So that, I'm going to have a piece of tear and tape ready. And we're going to pick, we had prepped this with a piece and fold this in half and you're going to adhere that to the back of that tear and tape and then i have this piece ready to put right over the top to hold it okay so that's how we made our little tail and we are going to add some more dimensionals on this so over there right there and Right there. I'm not gonna take the tear and tape off, like little piece off, I'm just gonna leave it. And then this goes up at the top. 
and I'm going to trim this other ribbon. And, and I think oh, I like it like that. I think I'm going to leave it like that. And that was it for this one, you guys. It was So the fun thing was coloring the ribbon on this. And we just have to add opals. The opal rounds are over here. So I did a big one. A big one and a small one. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. That card mat just did all of the work for you guys on that one. Okay, that was 14. Number 15. All you should have left here is a mat and a base and your pile is gone. <laughs> all right, last page here, you guys. Here's the card for us to look at. <laughs> I saved the easy, I believe this is probably the easiest one, unless you hate bows, but fold your base in half, flip this one over, put adhesive on the back, glue it to the front, and get your bow maker out, and you're gonna use the gingham. Oh man, I want that over here. So, I'm gonna go with that size. And make yourself a little bow. Now, this isn't the easiest one if you hate making bows, sorry. <laughs> but, there we go. That's that. I think we're officially done with ribbon for the night, you guys. And we need our little glue dots over here. Rip that off. Oh, I might need more though. So put my glue dot right where I want my bow to go. But I think I might have problems with this one because he went a little bit crookedy on me. So I'm gonna put that. No, I want the other side. That side there. Now you can see my tails. I am not an excited person when my tails look like that. So, <laughs> all right, we gotta get more glue dots and we're gonna put where we want our tail and our other tail. And then we kind of situate them, fluff our bunny ears. And then you're gonna trim your tails. I always trim the tails after I have it on the card because then I know it's gonna look good. If you trim them first, they might not be like laying right. This one, I put a small one there a big one there. Let's do a small one there. Big one there. And then it must be another small one. <laughs> you guys, so, all right. So you have used over half of your um, opal browns. Had you only used three on some of the cards instead of five though, um, that one did not have its stick on it. You can see that. And if you would have only used three instead of five on some of them, you guys probably would have had that many, because there was about six cards that we used five of them. So you would have had over half, you know, about half your embellishments left to do your other half of your cards. So, all right, life is a garden of possibilities is our 15th card. <sighs> we did it, you guys. That, you know, that's the last page in the PDF. So, um, <clears throat> We made just two fine, like minor tweaks, and I do want to go back and I'll put in there about the card mat, um, cutting that in half. We got to experience using an embossing buddy with you guys. So just know when the holiday catalog comes out, there is going to be an embossing buddy in there. Um, I literally only used these two stamps, a congratulations and a thanks. Um, I am not going to take the time with you as a group to um, stamp my insides. I feel like you guys are good that you can go through each one of these now and figure out if you want to stamp a sentiment but I would definitely go back and put focal images in oh you guys like them yay pretty and cute um this was in the hand pen set which was this spriggy looking thing and it had um something to fill in color that you could you know do that so I definitely highly encourage you guys I love to um, um, decorate my insides but it's already, I think, what time is it? It is, 
8 11. We're going on two hours and 40 minutes, you guys. <laughs> the girls got to eat. So I am not going to go through stamping them with you, but um, let's just throw these all out here so that you guys can see this conglomeration of beautifulness <laughs> right here. Um, I don't know if you could pick a favorite, what you would pick. Um, Sandy, hand pen is an all time favorite. Yes hand penned is a pretty one. I definitely agree a lot. So, and then we had this one, that one, that one. Oh man, I gotta move some stamps. I will be honest, the green and white ones were probably my least favorite, but I had to pull in the green and the white to complement what was left for, um, for the card mats that I had. I don't even know. Let's see if that one fits like, I don't know you guys. Let's do that. Can you see them all? I think I got them all on here. Let's shift these. Um, they're like, there we go. That's all 15 of them in a uh, camera view. Um, Linda Hunt, you asked when the next hand pen will be. I'm not doing anything more with hand pen that I'm aware of. Um, I'm doing another memories and more featuring texture chic. And maybe that's what you meant. Um, I haven't set a date for the Texture Chic uh, Memories and More class, which is the next one that I'm going to be doing. It's going to be sometime over the summer. The thing is that I'm having a hard time finding two more weeknights in, in the same week that I can do an online and an in-person. And it's hard to do in-person at night during the week. I mean, sorry, it's hard to do in-person other than um, at night during a week. Um, so I might end up doing the online version during the day but you guys will have to like because the video is always available to watch if you can't watch it live but i know that some of you guys really love to watch the live and it's hard to do that if it's during the day so i'm looking for the perfect time <laughs> and date um deb norman said the pink and black is still her favorite um yeah that um okay so i'll tell you my top three. Oh man my four I think well, five. Oh man, I don't know. So I do love the pool parties with the purple. So I love this one, this one, this one, this one. I love this one with the yellow. And I do love that one and this one. Um, I'm not a big blue person. So a blue or green are my kind of not my favorite colors. I love purples, pinks, <laughs> and this pool party color. <laughs> so you're very welcome, Linda. So yeah, as soon as I have the date and time picked, you guys, I will create an event for it. So not to say that I don't like these, I just like other ones better. <laughs> so, woo! Okay, so let's get these. All right, I'm gonna put them back in order so that I have them. And then I think it was this. This, nothing like going backwards and then forwards. All right, so there's this beautiful card, Cheryl says. Cheryl, I'm, hope, I'm happy that you like them. That one goes here and here. All right. Thanks, Beverly. I, Beverly, this was your first Memories and More class. I hope that it went okay. I know we talked on the phone the other day about it. I hope that watching the video was very, very helpful for you. Um, so, and let's see here. So, so let's do our door prize. Um, Cheryl Thomas, you said beautiful cards. I'm really hopeful that you were happy that you took the class with me. I know you were on the fence and just figuring out, but you have your other stuff left over that you can make more of these now. So, all right, you guys, we're going to flip over to random number generator and we're going to put 32 people in. So let's see here. If one through five win, they become 28, 29, 30, 31, and 32. So one through 27 is here and then I've got the next five up there. So let's see here, we have 32. All right, da -da -da -da, drum roll please. Number three, Beverly Smith. Woohoo! All right, girl. You are the lucky winner of a door prize. So how the door prize works, Beverly, is the next time you get something in the mail from me, like a card class, that's when I put a little gift in there, some Stampin' Up! product. Um, so congratulations, Beverly. Yay! Okay, I think that might be your first door prize. All right, so we're going to give away also the catalog launch party card. So let me flip this camera right back down so you can see all right all right here we go so oh becky you have four little okay becky i'm gonna help you out really quick 
I think your four little tiny flowers, there's, there's not many options for you, but just to help you in a nutshell, there was a little yellow one that belongs on the back side of this one, or I think your other tiny flowers go on this one. If they're black and white, they go on this one and you need to color them. That's really what you've got for tiny flowers are those two cards. All right, da -da -da! sweet survey, sending love and big hugs goes to Sarah Merchant. You are the lucky winner of the sweet survey card from catalog launch. Da -da -da! Orchid Oasis goes to Susan Reed and the parakeet party. Da -da -da! You're very welcome, Becky, goes to Andrea Hampshire Cox. Um, Hampshire, I think, H-O-M-S-H-E-R. Andrea, you're the lucky winner of that. Yay. I know I reached out to you today asking for your address, and so I can include your card. I believe I have Susan's, and I also have Sarah's address. Yay. Da -da -da. The Tahitian Tide goes to Becky Christensen. Yay, Becky. And da -da -da. Last but certainly not least, this uh, starry sky or night, um, a note of thanks goes to Bonnie. It's Lewallen, Lewallen, L-E-W-A-L-L-E-N. Bonnie, you're the lucky winner. I don't have your address, Bonnie. So if anybody knows Bonnie or Bonnie, if you're watching, if you could reach out to me. These cards plus all the other cards are set to be in the mail by Tuesday before I leave for vacation. <laughs> so, all right. Woo, you guys, we made it. So congratulations to those six lucky ladies. Um, yeah, so tomorrow night, oh my gosh, you guys, it feels like tonight's Thursday for some reason. Just a reminder, uh, these are what we're making tomorrow night. So this is ink, paper, scissors featuring symbols of fortune. I know some people might not have been all over these cards because of the crane, but look at them for past the crane. Like let's say you don't have the crane, you could put something else there or something else there, and that really doesn't even have the crane on it, and this has flowers. I bet most people could still get by without having the crane set and making these beautiful cards, and you might figure that out tomorrow night when you're watching, and I believe I have about five, I have about five sets of the cards left, the kits left, so if anybody's interested um, between now and tomorrow, um, just reach out to me um, and let me know. Um, I hope to have them if you want them. <laughs> so um, so tomorrow, you guys, I'll be live at 6 Central, back to the normal time. I just knew that with the Memories and More class, it is a little longer. Um, it usually does do about two and a half to three hours. So I started earlier because of that. Um, tomorrow is back to 6 Central, though. And then you can watch. Kelly has a, a Technique Thursday. She won't be live tomorrow, but she has it taped. And you will be able to watch that tomorrow. If you missed Tip Tuesday yesterday, um, go ahead and watch that. And um, hi, Barbara Barco. Uh, the other note, too, you can watch for I will be doing a swap card showcase between now and Tuesday. And I'm going to also try to go over the last chance list with you guys uh, when I can sneak that in. So we've got a bunch of lives coming up yet um, between now and Tuesday. <laughs> so, <laughs> woo, okay. All right, you guys, I'm going to sign out. Happy Wednesday. Happy hum day. Uh, lots of sunshine, love, and hugs to you until we meet tomorrow again. <laughs> love you long time. Bye.